This is Q Talk America. The following broadcast contains adult humor, language, and topics, along with partial nudity. Actual knowledge is used sparingly. This show is a result of a lost bet and a bad game of rock, paper, scissors. It's the show with Clayton McKee. And now, a man with a face for radio, Clayton McKee. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another potentially eventful show here in Studio C, coming to you live from the heart of Central Phoenix, Arizona. That's where we are from. Thank you for listening from around the world. Everybody's on the chat room already. We've got Nero and Edith and Dawn and my mom. So many people jumping around on there. It's great. Thank you all. It's uh, We're down yet another one. Uh, Marnie Ryer apparently has fallen ill, and she will be uh, may possibly enjoying us from afar this evening. I don't know if she's going to listen in, or she could ch- possibly chime in in the chat room. Oh, I got a wrong wrong mic for you. Try to to to. Oh, oh here I am. I got, yeah, now this microphone is like a mile away. Well, that's how what, does that work? Oh, she sits off in an angle. Doesn't right, she? she does. Like well, that. well, now, like, yeah. How does she work this shit? <laughs> Al has chosen it's to take. It's very complicated over yeah. there. Right. Whatever happens in that seat. Al has chosen to take Marnie's seat because he has a better <laughs> shot behind me over here. If you're watching us on the on the video behind me, there is a huge uh, screen where we have the chat room up, and you can just glance up and see it. Oh, oh it's over right there. Right over there. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I, <laughs> where? <laughs> It's over there. There. <laughs> There's a there is such a joke with that that selfie stick of of Cat Carlson's. My God, it was a big weekend and uh, best twelve dollars I've ever spent. Yeah, you got a lot of mileage for that twelve. I bucks. got a lot of comedy out of it. Yeah. Very much so. Very funny. Anyway, here we are, and uh, thank you again. It's uh, show number two hundred six. It's the tenth of March as we come to you from Phoenix, Arizona. Potentially, it's the eleventh of March for those of you listening in other parts of the world. Is it really? abroad? That's tomorrow. Remember, we're morning shows for Cairo. Right. Oh, it's the 11th for... Oh, don't confuse me. <laughs> uh, damn it. Oh, and then not to be confused, everybody else is all jacked up because of that daylight savings time spring forward shit again. So yeah. people don't know what when the hell we're on yeah. or what Kudos we're doing. Kudos to those of you that found us at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Good work. You're doing better than, than most other people. In fact, <laughs> some people here in the studio. <laughs> oh, hi, Dr. Cat. <laughs> oh, oh, very good, Edith. Yes, very good. Good work. Heaven sakes alive. Well, we've all managed. Al is on the on the mend still, I think, with his illness. He was. Yeah, I'm drinking and I rode my bike. So. Oh, two two things that are two thumbs she's, up. She's two things fine. Back. Yeah. <laughs> Good. She's That's, fine. Oh, and they're just enthralled. Now I feel like remember when Steve Cerna was with us and he just watched the video monitor. You're <laughs> oh, just watching. No, but he just watched a picture of him. Yeah, yeah. he was just looking at himself nice. the whole time. Totally. Yes, Aaron. That's that's this that w- selfie stick. <laughs> oh, hello, Aaron oh, from oh, LA. Oh, Aaron. Yes. Oh my heaven sakes alive. So what I used to, I mean, is it so you can get a picture from further away of yourself? I don't understand the selfie stick. Yes. Well, if you take a lot of like the group selfie, then your arms just can't quite get long enough, and then you only get like one person's eyeball in the little corner there, so you can you can widen the shot a little. I bit. gotcha. Yeah. Only you can, you you can also friends that could take your picture. If only. Well, you want them to be in it. Sure. Or you just hire people that and risk. Also, can't. in the event that you were somewhere beautiful <clears throat> and wanted to get maybe more of the landscape. <clears throat> and, oh, the pan- I gotcha. I block out a fair amount of photo. Oh, so the farther that that, I yeah, I sure do. Yeah, <laughs> you make a make I, a hell of a door, cat, not a good window. <laughs> yeah, I take I take up a lot of that frame. So if I wanted to take a photo of myself, say at the wonderful and palatial cobalt this afternoon, which I well, did, you I, did, psh, yes, I took out the selfie stick <laughs> and I got a very nice like landscape shot behind me of the beautiful bar. And I only took up this much of the photo no, instead of nothing this says much of the, the photo. Palatial grandeur, like <laughs> like a Central Phoenix gay bar. Yeah, yeah. there's that. Beautiful. Like, like a patio in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's lots of house plants on that. On I, I, I that always it's cracks lovely. me up. I'm like, it's like we're well, we're almost outdoors. <laughs> we're like fifth, we're outside with fifty feet from fresh air. Mm-hmm. With all these plants just absorbing smoke right Which and left. Which for for some people is close enough. Yeah. You and don't and, get and too as close, close as they're nature. ever gonna get, right? right. Yeah. Don't want to get too close to nature. No, who wants to be close to nature like that? Heaven's <laughs> sakes. Well, right. we'll jump right into it. Kat Carlson, uh, you and I worked together a little bit on Saturday. Oh, air quotes around the air work. Air quotes of work. Yeah, very much so. We sure yeah, didn't work gonna say, I was going to say, I'm going to need a word definition. <laughs> I need a working definition of the word working. Well, in what? fairness to Kat, she was positioned, she was stationed at a bar that was not as busy as other. I, yeah. I looked like I was working. I was oh, wearing yeah. the official t-shirt of the occasion. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I was standing next to someone who was also capable of doing work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was surrounded by <laughs> things that I could potentially make cocktails with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
known as work. Sure. <clears throat> no, known in my world as work. Yeah. And, I feel uh, there were sad, non-drinking people around <laughs> you due to your lack of efficiency. No, we were, we were like the bad stepchildren just stuck in the back parking lot where nobody knew we were there. They couldn't find him at oh, first. Of, yeah. of Stacy. Yes. Yeah. So, so what Stacy did is beyond the fence, beyond the barricade. Is there a, a drink right. you'd like to drink? Round right. back. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We we were the the white trash round back. Yes, but because there's there's fucking nothing back there. It's well, because apart- apartment complex that complains about the noise. Yeah. For the um, <clears throat> Melrose Street Fair, Stacy got the extended premises permit and put up the lovely chain link fence that you have to put up when you do the a nice permit. fence. Mm. It is a yeah. nice fence. Yeah, it's quality. Uh huh. Keeps people working. Keeps sure. Americans working. That's a sure does. Button. Sure Especially does. Especially fence setter uppers. Yeah. yeah. And so the idea was to have and the like. Yeah. The idea, <clears throat> and I, I see where it was going, was to have a, you know a secondary patio back there with another bar to, to serve people and more space for people, and uh, it just it took a while for everybody to overflow like from the front door to the actual nice patio to be like, oh, there's the shit barren out back wasteland. Too. Yeah. Right. There's a keg of Bud Light and two bottles of vodka out back too. Oh, good. I might need, yeah. It might be a dark day. I might be wandering an alley and need your services. And right. I'm happy to see you. I, I, I'll be in that alley. But no, it was actually a really fun time. And uh, we did, as the afternoon went on, uh, actually picked up and they, you know, there were tables and chairs out back and a food truck. And, and it did. It just took a little while. So I had the, the great pleasure of really just standing around for about two hours and talking to Mr. <laughs> McKee and, and my new husband. Yes. My new husband. The husband. <laughs> and I, from what I understand, it was a lovely day. It that was, was a beautiful lovely day. day. Really was nice. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Great well, day for the based street Based on weather reports I read later, <laughs> and, and Kyle and I went and promptly stole all of the umbrellas that were intended for the cu- comfort of customers, and put them around our bar so we were shaded nearly the entire time. Oh, good. Yeah. Because yeah. when you're just sitting stationary, you're a target for yeah. that sun. Because I was looking at it, and it was like a metal portable bar, and I looked at Kyle, and I'm like, "We're just gonna cook." Yeah. 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 So they set yeah. that all up. So that was good. And then. So you were there, though, for the height of it. Because you know, there was a little bit of a rush back there and it got going. Yeah. So that, and then, and then it just died out. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, right after you left. Because the street bear tired. ends at some point. Well, right. Unlike yeah. the memorial bar that lives on in infamy. Yeah. Right. Well, the hope, the hope and the dream was that, you know, everybody would get there and stay at, oh, we can be literally outside. But no, it didn't. It, and, the, and dream, the dream no. died. And <laughs> as organically as it possibly could, the Cat Carlson Memorial VIP Lounge sprung up. Fucking funny stuff. <laughs> they, because like a group of people oh. moved a bunch of tables over in the shade of the, of the, the food truck. Stole an umbrella, so. They moved gotcha. over into no, the no, shade. No, no, we had all the umbrellas, no, the but the umbrellas. food truck was was giving about three feet worth of shade at the moment. So, oh. so she designated that as the <laughs> the memorial garden. Is that what it was? The Cat Carlson Memorial VIP Lounge. VIP Lounge. Got it. It was funny God shit. damn it. Do not read the press releases. <laughs> Write it down. I can't keep it. She has so many memorial things. Yeah. And the funny part was she. I watched her say that a couple times to people who didn't get it, and they're like... They're like, what? But aren't you Cat Carlson? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do have to explain occasionally that that's why it's funny. Yeah. Buddy Early was one I had to explain that to. Oh, I'm, that's a I'm sad not day for dead Buddy. Yet. <laughs> I'm not dead. Yeah. We've, we've Buddy Early's like, but you're not dead. <laughs> I said, that's why it's funny, Buddy. Was Hashtag S- comedy is hard. Yeah. That SNL skit where uh, Natalie Cole sings songs with all the dead people. And one of them at the time was. Uh, <laughs> Tammy Wynette and she's like I'm I'm not dead your daddy's dead I'm not dead yet it was I can't remember who played Tammy Wynette but it was so that sounds like funny. something that Jan Hooks would have done it it then mm-hmm. that sounds about the right era too yeah. unforgivable yeah. in every way yeah. I hated that fucking song yeah I still don't like that song Good. I had to stop going to weddings for like 10 years because I was like uh, all sure. I'm gonna do is criticize the, the father-daughter dance this terrible song yeah because, you know, your dad's alive. Stop singing that song. <laughs> Plus, why is she singing a love song with her dead dad? Like, I'm... Mm, also weird. Creepy. Yeah. A lot of weird happening. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like when you somebody dances to My Funny Valentine and he just calls her ugly for like three solid minutes. The whole minutes. time, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're ugly. You're kind of forgettable. You're... A little bit fat. Yeah, a little bit fat. But kind of like you. But, I, yeah, I can't hey, explain it, but I like you anyway. There's a wedding song. <laughs> it describes this show. <laughs> just I think. cling to that yeah. word Valentine as you dance. <laughs> well, if you want to be happy for the rest of your life. Yeah, make an ugly woman your wife. It's uh-huh. true. <laughs> dream the impossible dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a funny song. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So, so be happy for the rest of then your life. Then, so anyway, yeah. Sunday... I was a little envious because you had the Superman bounce a lot. In the, oh, that's right. Your birthday. So, not your birthday. Not my birthday, no, but a, a, a wonderful young man in my house turned seven last week. Oh, congratulations. And so we had the, the birthday party, and we, of course, rented the bounce house and served the cake and did the things with small children in a finite amount of time. 
Oh. Yeah. Limit yeah, it. I know. Have a great time, but you've got well, this much time yeah. to do it. Because Sharon wanted to do like an eight-hour extravaganza, and I was like, mm, oh, no, 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 Shut no. it down. Has she never met children? No, or she their has. parents? She has. <laughs> or and, their parents. And what's, what's really funny about it is she was really kind of like trying to drag it out because I think she was enjoying having company at the house, and I get that. Um, but she was kind of trying to drag it out. Is she a hostage of some sort? Maybe. Yeah, okay. All right. Right. She was enjoying the freedom. <laughs> And but their yeah, daughter, Suri, too. What was funny is that kids are so used to, like, the birthday party format is that they all, like, seriously, spontaneously, an hour and maybe an hour and 15 minutes after they all arrived, they all sat at the table ready for cake. Because they know. You you show up. You say hello. You play for an hour. You sit down. You have cake. You play for about 30 more minutes and, boom, out the door. Gotcha. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's the birthday party format. Like, everywhere you go. I didn't realize there was a format. There is. That's good to yeah, know. Yeah, and, and, you know, kid-friendly places like, you know, <clears throat> your Chuck E. Cheese and your <clears throat> trampoline park, the places that host them for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's their timeline and their format. Like, you've got your hour of playtime. You do your kick. You got a little more playtime, and everybody's out the well, door. Now that you mentioned that, and remind me of that, when I worked... Uh, eons back oh in yeah the, your party cloud in the, day. In the 80s I this. yeah when i worked for showbiz pizza place and i used to do birthdays and it was that it was mm-hmm. you had the each hour and there were like five big tables so five groups had come in and everybody was assigned to you know a deal and that was you're right it was that they yeah. they played ski ball and all the other crap for an hour then they ate did the little birthday show we all sang to them yeah then they had about 20 30 more minutes and then out they out were the, cuz we the got door. another party coming yeah. in and so this group of kids was so good at it they like sat down at the table Sharon was out front fucking around with i don't know she's talking to her mom or something like hiding from the party and i was like it is time for cake like let's these kids know yeah got i told places you to I, be. I, right <laughs> i told you we needed to do cake in 15 minutes these kids are ready that that is very funny that they're conditioned they're like ants mm-hmm. we they are just ready go. yeah they need that sugar high now mm-hmm. when they, when it becomes i don't know sure what the age limit is mm mm-hmm. mhm but for a graduation party for one of my nieces or nephews, um, we did a uh, bounce, like, obstacle course. Sure. And you, oh, you, need, you need quite a bit of yard to do it. Uh-huh. And then, like, some of the kids were getting really cocky and, like, flying through that thing. Right. And then all of us, all the, the elderly <laughs> <laughs> aunts went through. None of, the, none, of the, um, none of their husbands went through, but all of us that grew up together. Like, I talked to all of us into going through. Yeah. Oh, my God, that was hard. But it was... We laughed our asses up, and we'd been liquored up because we'd been drinking oh, sure. in the heat all day. Yeah, some of those are hard. Like, there are places in town where they have all of those obstacle courses set up indoors, mm-hmm. which is very nice when you have small, small children yeah. and it's so fucking hot out. Um, and when the kids were littler, like, the littlest guy, he would need help through them, so you'd have to go with him. And I would I would leave just exhausted. I yeah. Like, I can't do anymore. We gotta go. And you really have to, like, you have to climb a wall, and you, you like, you mm-hmm. hop over the wall, you do a slide, you and it's to all crawl in, under stuff. Yeah, and, and it's all in, like, inflated canvas, and so it's all, like, very... Mm. And this was summer in New York, so it was fucking muggy. Right. Muggy as shit. So you wanted to get, I mean, it was motivational to get through there, because get me out of this hot mess. And then at the end, to kind of clean it off, they put dish soap for the kids that were being too cocky. They put dish (laughs) soap in there and, like, sprayed it with the hose, so it was like a slick slick (laughs) course. And it just got, that was very, I don't know how much they paid for it, but I was very entertained. (laughs) (laughs) I gave that party two thumbs up in its Yelp review. Good work. So if that kid ever graduates from something again, God bless. You're going to go to that party. Yeah. Good. (laughs) Not in the summer. Maybe the autumn. No, in the winter it'd be hard. Jesus Christ, fucking thing be frozen. (laughs) Oh, no. I spent (laughs) shards of icicles stabbing you in the eye. I just spent a a less muggy time of the year. Maybe a spring or an... Oh, that's all um, you have is snow and mugginess. Oh, okay. Those are your two weather conditions. (laughs) Those are your options. Yeah. Yeah. Swamp ass or frostbite. Oh, my God. Oh, Molly, they're all still talking about... uh, (laughs) Chuck E. Cheese and Showbiz Pizza Place. Showbiz Pizza was regional because I know they were in Salt Lake as well. Okay. Yeah, I was in, uh, we had it in my hometown of Joplin, Missouri. And then I actually worked at one in Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right. That's where, when I was my junior year of high school. We had pizza yeah. places. We didn't do, we didn't do all this shit with pizza. We ate our pizza. Well, we didn't need a clown to make it better. You just eat, the, <laughs> eat the pizza. Go somewhere else for fucking ice cream. There was no clown. No, oh, I thought you played the clown, the or did I just make that up? No, no, there was... In my <laughs> mind, you were dressed as a clown this entire... <laughs> no, I... Saturday's a cowboy. I like your version. Yeah, no, it's nice. I used to take my... Because Big eyelashes. The way, the way Showbiz Pizza worked, the all the... the ca- they called them cast members, because <laughs> you all wore the, the, the top hat, the plastic top hat, and had the little vest like you were a, like in a show, oh. like from a maybe a... a uh, 
uh, barbershop quartet any, or something. Oh, dear Lord. Anyway, so we all wore Fancy. those things. But I yeah. used to take balloons and put them on sticks in my hat. So my hat was a big balloon hat. I used to call it my Dolly Parton hat. And so oh, I did that. And the no. kids and the kids all loved it. But no, the the show was an animatronic, and there was a bear that played a banjo and a gorilla that played the keyboards. Am I hallucinating this? Because this story just... <laughs> no, it's, it, I can just show you videos. Stranger I, mean, I, remember, and I remember the first time, time I by. dropped acid, and I had a story that <laughs> very, very similar. Same song. Same Animatronic in. bears. <laughs> I had balloons coming out of my head, and I thought it was Dolly Parton. I mean, I, I, <laughs> well, I recognize all the parts of this insanity. Seems Maybe similar. you were there. Um, Uncle, Uncle Milt's, Milt's Pizza Palette. Oh, Jesus. Oh, well, we have organs. What's it called? Organ Stop Pizza out in Mesa. They have a pizza place with a huge organ in it. That sounds bad to say, doesn't it? Yeah. Sure does. Huge organ. Wow. Sure does. It's a children's party with a huge organ. <laughs> Not appropriate. <laughs> oh, my God. Not at all. I don't know. Maybe just because my birthday was around Mother's Day. So we just combined it with Mother's Day. And like I, and, like, I never really had a party. Yeah, you know what? We didn't either. Until we I was old enough to like drink and like have a right. party party. Like, yeah, we never had like the parties growing up like they do now. Like, now it's almost kind of expected. Like, oh, when's the kid's birthday party? And uh, you're like, oh fuck, well I gotta make the reservation and then I gotta invite I as gotta many kids as I can. Purse wine. Right. Well, and if you if you do it outside of your own home, like we didn't always have the space. We just moved into this house over the summer. So if you do it outside of your own home at one of these like kid jungle gym places, it's like twenty bucks a kid. Mm-hmm. Like this shit adds up real fast. Like you, oh yeah, you ordered ten. You know, there's thirty kids in your class. You got to pick ten. Well, remember uh, several weeks back, we did the story about the family that that oh, build yeah, yeah. that build the kid because he RSVP and then didn't show up. Shit right. happens. Fuck that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not on board. I don't recall ever doing a, a, a gathering of a birthday party like that that I attended or was uh, we never had. No, like we had mom would make a we cake and we had food and we ran through the sprinkler in the yard. I mean, that was kind of yeah. a. And we lived in the same city as, as most of my mom's side of the family. So, like, you know, we'd go to grandma's house and aunts and uncles would come over. And, like, it would always be like a family dinner for your birthday. And, and my was birthday it. was in May, so there was a good chance of snow, too. So Sure. Still in there. Yeah, there, cer- there certainly wasn't a, a, a pool party. An playoff. outdoor festival. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> didn't we know somebody who moved their birthday so that they didn't have to have their birthday in shitty weather all the time? No, Harrison moved hers. She would lie because it was after school got out. Uh, oh, so, so she, that she could have it during school. So she school. was school because she was she was a summer kid. Oh, uh, gotcha. She wanted to miss her party. <clears throat> in New York, you stay in school till the end of June, so mm-hmm. she would have not had to. She grew up in Arizona, where they I don't know they go to school like five days a year. So <laughs> they kick them out. It seems that way. Or in certain cities in the, around the area, they've adopted the four day school week that's just happening in because there's no money. Yeah, that's what they're saying, which is going to just cause a upheaval for everybody with daycare and parents oh my and god shit. i mean you want mm-hmm. that you absolutely want them in school five days a week that's your babysitter 52 i mean two weeks a granted, year they yeah. may learn something sure sure 52 weeks a year i like how you threw that in there no spring <laughs> I, break no christmas break nope terribly sorry go to school assholes yeah <laughs> <laughs> now have your cake and get out yeah <laughs> right cake you got 20 minutes time to go pretty much got it so our I'll, lady of perpetual pepper that's funny Oh, the empty Catholic church. Yeah, Don, that was more she of my have, birthday party. Yeah, she ran out of space. It's Our Lady of Perpetual Pepperoni. Oh, Oni. Okay. Uh, pepper- oh, Pepper. Oh, there's the Oni. That's, huh. e- that's Thanks, even Molly. funnier. <laughs> Our Lady of Perpetual <laughs> Pepperoni. An empty Catholic church. Wow, how does that happen? Well, um, I don't know. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't. I, they, they ran out of Catholics? A, well, they built a bigger one, I guess. They all moved over there, so they had a, either a storage unit or they rented it out as a pizza place. I don't know. Who knows what the hell they've done? Are there, oh, oh where's the, there's the church, Our Lady of Perpetual Sorrow, and I'm like, who would go to that church? Sad people. Wah, wah. Yeah, I was just going to say, wow, those Catholics really need better PR. If Debbie they, Downer. Yeah. Really <laughs> Mr. Perkins, what have you been up to? Uh, You're feeling better, allegedly. Yeah, yeah, slowly slowly but surely. Um, went out for a couple drinks Sunday morning. Of One of my favorite coworkers is, has left the building. We've gone to a different hospital, and so mm-hmm. we went for breakfast and a couple drinks and i hadn't drank in a while and so i had my two bloody marys and i slept for about 20 hours afterwards because i was <laughs> just exhausted and then uh but it's good you're sleeping though oh yeah yeah <clears throat> and picked up a shift uh, last night and made it through that and felt actually kind of better when it was oh good by the time it was done so i thought well we're gonna bring liquor and a bike to this one and sleep for another 20 get get back to life yeah 
That's good. But I think I should have gone with vodka because the taste buds are really not enjoying. What is a very nice bottle of wine is really... Being wasted. Being wasted, gotcha. yeah. Gotcha. Because mm, this could be sad. just NyQuil at this point because it <laughs> doesn't taste like a fucking thing. Is it too late to switch? Is there vodka in the house? Mm. Oh, uh, no, but the wine's open. So now we, now we just oh, gotta now drink we just have to drink it. Yeah. Sure. yeah, so right. now you just can't waste it. Yeah. No, God, no. So, that's, I mean, that's, that's about it. Just kind of laying around and hoping for... To feel better and then realizing there's this whatever this is is just is just going around like everybody's got some version of this oh. delightfulness hmm. it sounds wonderful I, here's what i'd like you to do is just keep it in that corner yeah well uh, one would assume that any contagious well, portions ended i don't i'd have gotten ago, it last week if I did you ever it. have a temperature with this that you i don't just remember the, you saying? just the first day and then okay. and then gone like like nothing about it says you're gonna catch it except for you know, I, I, I have, I think, set a world record for washing my hands. No. Oh. I do have to say that. Good work. You hold the brass. Good to know. In our midst. And I've got the, the chappy hands to prove The it. world record. The world record holder. Hand washer. Of hand. Exactly. God, that's that's a good title to have. Can you add that to your Facebook as like an accomplishment, please? Parenthetically. Yeah. World record. World record holder. Hand washer. No. Does anybody practice a religion or feel like they're connected to a particular religion? Um, I'm going to say no. I don't oh. know, Kat. I don't think we've ever asked you that. We're diving into religion already. Gosh, um, really? We're already at the we're at thoughtful vulgarity this early in the woo! even in the first half hour. But no, I'll <clears> definitely <throat> answer. I was I was interestingly enough raised without religion because my parents come from conflicting religious backgrounds. My father was raised Mormon, and my mom kind of a Methodist, but really just a read the paper on Sundays kind of a family. Um, so. <laughs> Because we were, yeah. which was which was really interesting living in Salt Lake like I did because everyone goes to church all the all the Mormons like they all go to the same church and they all know each other. Um, so as I've grown grown up, I I like to think that all things are possible, but I think for the most part I identify mostly atheist. I'm mm-hmm. really, like if I can't see it and touch it, I I usually don't believe in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I I was raised pretty strict, uh, not strict Methodist. I, I like to say strict Methodist, and then I found out <laughs> I found out much later what what Methodist meant, and realized oh. we we didn't didn't practice at all. Except no, my for parents going went to, to Vegas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean my mom was very religious and everything. She just she just did a little cherry picking of the Methodist rules. Uh. and my dad was actually raised uh, Salvation Army. I don't know. I don't know how my grandmother went from Catholic to Salvation Army. Mm-hmm. And she's dead, so we can't ask her. But she switched to a non-denominational. <laughs> this just in: Al's grandmother <clears throat> passed on. Still dead. Uh, <sighs> so she switched to. She was a non-denominational, and then her kids all kind of chose, and my dad kind of went with. Well, this lady seems to be Methodist, so I'll fake that once in a while. So I mean, by the Sounds time good. by the time I was a teenager, we were all professional Sunday disease people. <laughs> my dad would accompany her on like big days, Christmas, and, uh, Easter. My sister developed the perpetual Sunday sore throat and. About fourteen or fifteen, I was like, I, you know what? I think I have what she had. What is, can, we, can we review her again? Because I'm, I'm going to say whatever she has. I feel like I have that. But I did the whole shebang. I was in the, um, I was in the choir, no. the kids chorus, kids plays, like church, the youth group. I went to D.C. with the youth group. I mean, I read The Shining and got everybody drunk, but yeah, I, I mean, I was twelve. <laughs> Like you do, yeah. You're a little behind the times, so. but I was, yeah, I was definitely raised with the whole, the whole culture. I used to always jokingly say that uh, half the family's Catholic, half is Christian, half doesn't care. Yeah, that's what I always used to say back home because I had a. I've mentioned before I come from a family of three sets of grandparents because before I came along, my father's parents were divorced and both remarried, so mm, sure. I had three sets of grandparents because mom's parents right. were together. So, part of that. Was my f- my dad's mother was very Catholic, and that whole that whole thing. I mean, she even had Jesus on a fucking lighter that was on the dining room table. I remember that. Well, well, God bless. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And then my uh, religion really wasn't talked about a whole lot. Um, certainly not positively in my my mom's parents' house because Grandpa always thought everybody was a lying bastard, and you know, I, you know, all those churches are all just lying, hypocritical, blah 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 blah. So that's pretty much how that was. But I, I agree with Kat. I think I'm pretty much. In the in the atheist mode as well because I I don't if I just can't believe in something I can't see touch feel you know yeah, I believe in the whole like nature thing the whole mother nature yeah. the spirit of the trees the blue corn moon bullshit that's, I believe in that more that often. seems awfully gay yeah <laughs> it does is there, is there a more gay religion outside of Catholicism that is there I may a gay enjoy way to say that um. Well, the Catholics get a purse that's on fire. But that's my, a, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, tell it because one of my favorite oh, stories is when 
my sister got married. And I, and again, my, I would just get bored in church. And my mom would be like, all right, there's a movie about this part of the Bible. Just read this. Mm-hmm. So she would always like point me towards stuff that there were movies about that I'd seen. So I could, cause I love to read. Sure. And then, you know, whenever a good song would come on and we all got to sing, I would like stand up for that. But I mostly just sat there and like counted to myself. I'd like, I was just bored shitless in there. <clears throat> so it, my sister got married right before I turned 16. And we were picking the, you know, she was getting married in our church. And then I realized, like, oh, someone had talked about that they had had a reception hall in the basement of the church. It was built in the 1800s, 18-something or other. Mm -hmm. And the basement of the church was a a little sketchy. Like, you know, you'd want a a tiny bit more fancy. This was just, like, you know, where where she had her reception was no no more fancy. But so I was like, why are we going to a Catholic church for the, like, a a Catholic hall? For the reception, like yes, it's the the hall is a little bit closer to our house, but you know, drinking and driving in 1983, no one cared about that. Right, it was encouraged. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Just do it. A roadie um, from the Perkins, Nike, it was yeah. engraved on the glass. <laughs> exactly, Nike was just sponsoring drinking and driving at that point. <laughs> so I was like, why why are we not doing the reception downstairs from the actual wedding? Like, what's the mm-hmm. deal with that? And she's like, oh, the Methodists don't drink. You can't drink here. And I'm like. What the hell's wrong with these like, people? You signed up for She's like, well, why do you think we always drink grape juice at communion? She's like, there's no liquor. Like, they don't buy into any of that. You can't fake, you can't even fake wine with these people. And I'm like, what else are they against in this little crowd here? And she's like, oh, gambling. I'm like, bitch, you go to Vegas twice a year. <laughs> <laughs> like, I learned to play craps when I was seven or eight years old on Thanksgiving. Like, we had a legitimate game of craps where I won like 50 bucks at someone's house. Like uh, and I'm like, <laughs> for real? She's like, well, we don't. We're not into everything, and right? I, that just cracked me up. That she was not going to have her own daughter get have her, like she can have, get married at the right. church, but we. Sorry, sir, we have right. to go drink. It was one of the funniest conversations, and the look on my mother's face, like, listen, Alfie, enough with the fucking questions. <laughs> We drink, they don't. We're yeah. breaking up. <laughs> Listen, you little shit. Sit down, shut up, and go make me of our. And the our irony, teenage. the irony in that story is that you know people want to chastise you for picking cherry picking what you want out of the religion. Well, if you look, that's all they do now. They you know they only we do, all do yeah. no no right. Oh, yeah. But I mean I mean even in the churches, none of them actually go hardcore scripture and obey everything. Otherwise. Oh, yeah. No, they all pick and choose their own shit. They're all uh, hypocritical. Oh, well, yeah, there's the yeah. Old Testament. I could just see the look on my mother's again. face like, no one else asks questions. Yeah. Like, my sister probably was like, well, everybody everybody has their reception at St. Charles. That's just what we do. Oh, yeah. You don't ask questions. You didn't realize that there was a real reason yeah. behind it. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Not going to have an open bar when it's all just grape juice. What the <clears> fuck? No, no point. No, no, no point at all with that. All right, now no whatever your name is down there, <laughs> <laughs> sir or ma'am, I can barely well, see you. Like, like, like uh, we mentioned earlier, I spent uh, all Saturday with uh, at Stacy's for that street fair thing, um, and then one of the one of the oh, I love how you're writing again on that. That's so that makes me laugh. It's the um, coolest shit I, ever. It really is. And you post it online. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> um, it's one of those things that it, the when you're fighting a battle against something that you can't see or fight, you can't do. It's a software thing where Microsoft does something, and you're like. What the Everything worked before, and then why doesn't it work? And you spent hours and hours chasing your an, un, an unknown tail to mm-hmm. figure out what the fuck it is. That was a part of a frustrating weekend for us. Um, we had, we figured a couple things out. Blah blah blah. Things move on. Um, that's yeah. Just it's the norm. The norm stuff. Big weekend. But God, absolutely gorgeous weather here in Phoenix, Arizona. Cannot be oh, seriously upset about that at all. And again, like we're supposed to be what in the nine like ninety one ninety two by the weekend. Something like that? Well, sure, that makes sense because, I mean, it's not even the first day of spring yet. No, Let's yeah. see if we can hit 100 in Come winter. Come on! Do it in March! Come on! It's good. It's all right. I like it, though. It's, it's wonderful outside, and I, I can't spend enough time outside. No, right I now. totally agree. Yeah. It's, it is a beautiful day. I always tell people, 80s in March, 90s in April, mm-hmm. 100s in May, 110s in June, oh. and then move. Right. And <laughs> for, then July and August, just stay the fucking side. For three yeah. months. You have two choices. Vacation... I met, uh, I met I met uh, a a couple of guys at uh, Charlie's the other night. They um, were sitting at the corner of the bar, older gentlemen, and uh, what were they doing at Charlie's? It was early on Never a Friday, uh, and they had, they were asking uh, <laughs> questions about how long have you lived with me, asking how long I'd lived here, if I was always from here, yada yada. Um, named uh, Brian and DJ, they have been together for ever and ever. They're from Kansas City. They bought a condo out here. In the like about six seven years ago, when the economy tanked, and they bought it for nothing, 
Um, but they were asking about where they should move because they want to move out here full time. They're both just tired of snow and ice and tornadoes and everything else that Kansas City yeah. has to offer. Um, so we all obviously bonded a little bit and talked because I'm from Joplin, which is just due south of Kansas City on the state mm-hmm. line. Mm-hmm. So that was it was nice to meet and talk to some some people from back in the Midwest and they like they just love it out here. And I'm like, yeah, move to Central Phoenix. That's where everything is. Everything's available <clears throat> yes. right here in the Central yes, Corridor. Yes. So that was cool. I mm-hmm. I would imagine I will probably see them again um, as, as they are moving and going to buy a house at her somewhere. That's cool. Oh, well, that's fun for All them. right, kids, 730. Uh, are you going to tag team with me on this, Kat Carlson? Sure. Oh, we're going to make magic. Here we go, kids. It's called Headlines. It goes something like make this. Uh, let's hope we get through this. I'm sure we will. We're going to try. It's Tuesday, March 10th, 2015. Show number 206. Here's Headlines. They're closed. Arizona doesn't do daylight savings time, and here's why. The search for dancing man. Free range parents. The middle of nowhere. Fucking Americans. Incoming eggs. Hillary plus email equals scandal. And getting naked at the donut shop. Oh, (laughs) just titillating stories coming at you right now in headlines on Q Talk America. (laughs) Can I move my chair back? You're moving back over here? I don't like it. Yeah, I didn't think you were going to like it down there. Al's moving. i got to change his mic. We're going to move that mic. Do that mic. Oh, wrong Stop mic. the presses. Wrong mic. Yeah, reading the board, not that exciting. Yeah. It's kind of fun every once in a while. <coughs> and Molly's here, so funnier than funnier than sometimes. Yeah, Molly, what are you doing? Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. What are you doing there, Kat? Very busy over there. Trying to find something to plug, plug in, in something. Yeah. I'm running out of battery juice. Somewhere there's, Somewhere a, there's a jack. A there oh is. my oh, god, she found it. Lights up and everything. I do enjoy that it lights up to signify you got charge coming in. Makes me happy. Uh, Al, uh, this story made me think about you in regards to your father who used to work for Nabisco. Uh, but this is not a Nabisco story, but you'll understand why in just a moment. A Canadian man received more than a balanced breakfast when he recently opened a box of Frosted Flakes cereal to find a handwritten message inside the box. The first thing Stefan Godot of Timmins, Ontario, noticed when he opened the cereal box that there were the words, please read the bag, written in black marker on the side of the cereal bag. It was a note saying the cereal box was the last to be produced at a London, Ontario Kellogg's factory before it closed December of 2014. Uh, the box says, quote, uh, this, is a, this is the very last bag of Canadian cereal for the Canadian market from Kellogg's. Reads the message that includes the names of three factory workers. Uh, Godet said the, his first, he had mixed feelings about the note, including a concern that his cereal had been tampered with. But then I guess that all went away and he was then, that feeling was then followed by a sense of admiration and respect. <clears throat> he said, when he saw the message, my emotions started changing. Uh, it led to a certain sadness and awe, in a sense, and it was a very odd feeling because I realized the significance of this final package from that factory. The Kellogg's plant, which had been open for 107 years before it closed its doors on December 5th, 2014, the employees who signed the bag also put the number of years that each of them had worked, one for 24 years, one 28, and one for 29 years. The one who had worked there for 24 years, name was Mike Cascaden, uh, said he couldn't believe it when he learned that his message had been found. Four generations of his family had worked in that very plant. Uh, He said he couldn't sleep for the rest of the day. It was a whirlwind day of emotions, and it was both happy and sad at the same time. Um, Apparently, Cascaden and Godet say they hope to meet soon. Uh, The Godet family still currently has the unopened cereal bag. So I thought it was kind of neat that they wrote, and if you actually Google online and look up for the uh, Kellogg's, note in a box or something to that effect you'll see it and literally the cereal just wrote the note on and the that's side. where nabisco moved to uh to southern ontario as well they they closed the niagara falls plant oh god it's, it's been closed a long time and now it's like a big eyesore down by the falls oh but um <clears throat> yeah so that said that even <clears throat> kellogg's can't make it in su- southern ontario well, I don't know where but the big shredded wheat building is still mm-hmm. there you know it's where shredded wheat was always made in niagara falls and triscuits came from niagara falls for a long long time but shredded wheat used to be called the Niagara Falls, you know, the cereal of Niagara Falls, and it used to have a little, on the box of shredded wheat, there was a little picture of the falls. No. Because they were made, you know, 10, ten short blocks. It was on 10th Street, 10 short blocks from the no. the actual brink of the water. Goodness. Yeah, with the big wheat silos, and you could smell it when you got off the parkway and went down t- into the, you know, the falls part of the Niagara Falls. Pardon me, yeah. You could smell the silos of wheat and everything. It was always really cool. Huh. 
And how long did your dad work for Nabisco? Or do you even know? From, he started there in like 44 or 45, 44, I think he started there. And he worked there till 91. Wow. Yeah, because, and, and we were, I was trying to figure out the other day, because it was, they had this great, you know, back within the days when you actually got retirement. Um, it was your years of service plus your age. So, like, once you hit the 90 club, so if you were, like, 65 and you'd worked there for 25 years, you got the, the thing for 90. And his added up to, like, 110 somehow. <laughs> wow. Like, 110 <clears throat> between his age because he retired 62-ish. Oh. I was told there would be no math. Yeah. I can't remember. He worked there for, like, 40, 50, year, 50 years, and he was 62 or something. So it was a whole big thing about how far like he had made lot, it. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Molly. The guy in my story's name is Stefan. Yes. <laughs> Not to be confused with Stefan from SNL, but I get it. I don't, Wait, what? what I, don't, I don't get it. What was the, what year was that, Al? Probably something about your dad. Edith, could you for, ask the question again in the, in the, uh, in the chat room? Repost Cat it. Repost it. All right. It's been a talking point of the week last Sunday. Most of the nation sprung forward in daylight savings time and losing an hour of sleep. And really? John Oliver got it wrong on his show as to what it's for. Did he fuck it up? Yeah. Well, according to this. He was off this, by like 40 years, 30 years. Um, according to this, Arizona and Hawaii, to the nation's envy, do not observe daylight savings time. And for most Arizonans, it means we'll be on the same time as California, three hours behind the East Coast. <clears throat> Um, Arizonans love this special privilege, and in January, a lawmaker proposed establishing daylight savings time, and was met with shock and outrage. Outrage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Representative Phil Lovis from Peoria quickly withdrew his bill from the House because we like our no daylight savings oh, time. Right. And because of the real reason for daylight savings time is the reason why Arizona wants no part of it. Yep. In Arizona, Maricopa County supervisors refused to accept the change. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I skipped a... Daylight savings time started when wartime was established in the U.S. in 1918 to save fuel during World War I. Uh, Maricopa County refused to accept the change. In 1919, Phoenix and the rest of the state observed different time zones. So it initially started with just Phoenix being like, mm, nope. Uh, wartime, or daylight savings time as we now know it, was then reinstated in World War II. It went away after World War I and came back in World War II. Uh, and was brought, mm -hmm, was brought back permanently in the Uniform Time Act of 1966. Arizona participated for one summer and then realized that's a terrible fucking idea to have extra time, <laughs> extra, extra daylight. sunlight. Yeah, yeah. Let's have extra sunlight. Let's keep sunlight it hotter later in uh. the evening, right? <laughs> and because I always bought into the whole like it's for farmers, it's for this. I didn't understand what the problem would be. So then finally, when Google arrived, one of the first things no. I ever Googled was like. What the fuck is daylight savings time really? Well, and it actually, um, <coughs> and the implementation is because of World War One, yes. but the the origin for the thought is a British thing. From it's his name wasn't Chamberlain, but it was a prime minister. Okay, I don't think it was the king. It was because when the when the weather is nice, make the day longer so that people can enjoy being outside longer because sure. they were such shut ins and there were so many diseases involved with like. Being in the being dark in, and the right. rainy weather, that if you have a nice day, make it longer. Get out, uh, right? And it was to it was to keep people outside longer and enjoy a longer a longer day. And then they found out they could save fuel if they did it. So I think I think the British played around with it for a while, kept going back and forth. And then in, in the war, they did it. But it really was just it was it was a nice sunny day idea of like sure. the weather's nice in the summer. Let's stay outside a little bit longer. Let's enjoy that. Right. And then they realized it. Because no. I think it was in the 80s that they tried it again. I think, I want to say it was like 85, what, maybe, here? that they did daylight savings time. There was one year right before I moved here. According to what I'm reading, the last time we talked about it was in 1967 in a nearly unanimous vote where Arizona <clears throat> legislators agreed to opt out of daylight oh, savings time I could have sworn we did like one, that they did one year here and like halfway through they were like, oh, turn the clock back. That's fucking stupid. Now... Indiana was in a similar boat and fucked around back and forth with different counties and different this. Yeah, they and had fast that. time slow. Arizona, uh, Indiana did fast time slow time. Right, and they, they got rid of all of that and just went on regular daylight savings time in 2005 and just unified all that in Indiana. And uh, in that area, um, farmers are actually against daylight savings time because they say that changing with the clocks is considered unnatural and unhealthy for cows. 
Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Farmers then, are like, don't uh, fuck around with it. Well, then critters so, yeah, are always that, on their own the, cycle. The farming, so the farming thing is a myth. Oh, and that's the biggest myth of all. That yeah, farmers because like, everybody's like, oh, yeah, it's for farming. They get up early to... They get up to, before the sun. Before the sun. So why would you want to make the sun later? Right. So now they're in the dark for another... Uh, they're wandering around in the dark for another hour. And now the cows are fucking confused because now you're milking them an hour later. Because I... And then one of the things that made me... One of the first things I ever Googled was farmers were like, stop blaming us for this retarded right. shit. Like, fuck you. It's not a thing. Not a thing. Not a thing. But yeah, so for the rest of you, those of you that have joined us here in the chat room and listening otherwise, thanks for finding us at the right time. What yeah. time is it where you are? We don't care. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they'll all start doing that. And now. let me tell you, I learned to say that about 1987. <laughs> like the first, after the second change of clocks, I just said, I, I don't give a fuck where time it is where you live. I'm just, I'll call you when I call you. Right. Answer your phone or don't. It'll be I have a, uh, in my bedroom, I have a, a, a elect, uh, digital clock that's from, connected to my Wi-Fi network, and it uh, automatically updates all the time. And you can make it, you know, show you headlines and all this other shit. I just want local temperature and clocks. Yeah. So I have a local clock, and I have the one for my hometown, so I know it's automatically. Oh. I always know what fucking time it is. Helps me every day. I know. Yeah. Although, you know what? Sunday night, my phone forgot that I lived in Arizona and really kind of freaked me out. Or no, I guess it was Saturday night because I closed the bar. Mm -hmm. So Saturday night I got off work and so it's Sunday morning, which is when you lose your hour anyway. Right. And I looked at my phone and I was like, what the fuck? How did it take us an hour to get? Oh, wait. My phone had just forgotten. They, it, it had me on mm -hmm. Mountain Standard Time and not Arizona Time. Right. Had a mini little heart attack. A little freak out there. I lost some time. What the fuck? <laughs> yes. How long was I mopping that goddamn floor <laughs> for? <laughs> God, those chores just closed the bar take forever. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then like the further north you go in the summer, the... The later the sun sets, because mm -hmm. I could, and that's the other thing is like it, it's not just an hour difference between dark time here in Arizona and dark time, dark time, dark time. sunset. Jesus Christ, <laughs> <laughs> lost a couple brain cells. <laughs> Must have been a fever in there um, somewhere. Yeah, it's, because we were allowed out till the streetlights came on mm, when I was a kid in too. the summertime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, and you know, as you get a little bit older and you start looking around and you start putting math together, I'm like. Did we come in the house at 8.30 at night? Like, what the fuck? I'm like, I felt like we were out. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't get yeah. dark till way after, you know, up in Niagara Falls. Like, maybe 9.30, quarter to 10, it finally starts to get dark. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in Paris waiting for that fucking sun to set over that goddamn bridge. And it was like 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, um, <clears throat> people, I got places to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect segue. Uh, you said you're talking about London. Um oh. A London man who was fat shamed on social media for simply having a, a good time will be the guest of honor at a party like no other in Los Angeles coming up. It's a story of a good, uh, it's, it's the story of the good of a community overcoming the evil intentions of one person. On February 13th of this very year, an anonymous user on a message board posted a photo of a man dancing at a concert with the caption that read, spotted this specimen trying to dance the other week. He stopped when he saw us laughing. Now, the photo soon appeared on the image sharing website, M I think it's called Imgur, I M G U R, Imgur. Yeah, sure. Um, where the body shaming attempt was met with disgust and an overwhelming community of support for the, quote, dancing man. Cassandra Fairbanks saw the photo, who immediately turned to Twitter and called on others to help her find the man using the hashtag, f hashtag find dancing man, <clears throat> and organize something special for him. Uh, it felt horrible seeing that because I think we can all relate, Fairbanks said. More than 2,000 women in Los Angeles pledged to join Dancing Man for a massive dance party just for him. Now, the man whose real name is Sean eventually joined Twitter as at Dancing Man Found to thank Fairbanks and the others for their kindness. A GoFundMe page was set up to help the man travel to L.A. for the dance party, which has now raised over $35,000 in three days. The page admin said, admin said that the leftover funds would be donated to an anti-bullying campaign after they pay for the party. Uh, the L.A. Coliseum offered to donate its venue free of charge for this party. So I just like the, it was, somebody tried to, some bitch posted on there trying to fat shame this guy. And everybody's like, fuck you. We're going to throw a party for this boy. Yeah. And that, it's all been shitty. Like somebody went after um, Kelly Clarkson. Oh, for being heavy? on TV. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. I'm like, you know, settle the fuck. But I love it. Down. He's getting flown from. Um, he was actually. He's from London. He when all this blew up, they found uh, somebody had posted a picture. Like, I think I know this guy. And sure enough, it was him. He was in Kiev, and then logged in or created this account and got it all all over the world. Everybody linked up and found him and figured it out. Um, and then for the LA Coliseum to offer their venue, I thought that was fantastic. So oh, no. good times. Yeah, and he clearly gets around him. He's been in you know London and Kiev and yeah. 
He's he's dancing for his life. He's traveling. Something. He's very busy. He's very busy. Very busy. Whoops. I mean, I, we can't get too far in the horse because around the cross because of dark time. With um, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> After the um, the actual I number of Carney Wilson time. jokes that have been made, <laughs> clearly the number that we've made ourselves. Sure. Right. Exactly. Right. Since Carney. we've been fat shaming Carney Wilson since well, since birth, the beginning of time. Thing. It's just good sport, really. And 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 to thank us, she's coming to our pride to sing right here in Central Phoenix. Well, if there was ever a year <laughs> that I didn't give a shit about going to Pride, <laughs> this is it. Oh, this is it. I'm super stoked. I'm going to be front and center, and by front and center, I mean adjacent to and working the whole concert. Because you know all the. <laughs> I'll be right with you. Yeah. The straight woman I work with, and some of the lesbians too. Are all like, because the schedule came on, they're like, oh, did you take Pride Weekend off? I'm like, I don't, I, like, I don't even want to be an earshot of Wilson Phillips. Like, no. <laughs> what if one of them comes near me and starts telling me to hold on for one more day? What will you do? Will I don't want to go on? to, <coughs> Baby, I'll probably hold probably stab on. her in the neck. Like, <laughs> what, if they, what if they set you down and told you stories about their parents from back in the day in the 60s? As long as they didn't sing it, I oh, don't okay. care. okay, all right. As long as those three don't sing, they can do whatever they (laughs) host a talk show, enjoy a burrito. I don't care what you do. What you do. Tornado fries, whatever gets just do not sing. Well, speaking of people acting badly (laughs) and being overseas, two American women have have reportedly been arrested for carving their initials into a wall with a Uh, coin inside Rome's Colosseum. Can't believe people are that stupid. God. Yep. Yeah, that's. Ignorant. Two letters, J and N, about eight inches in length and scratched on a brick wall at the historic Roman amphitheater. The two women, both from California, reportedly snapped a selfie of themselves with their initials before they were arrested. Their names have not yet been released, but, you know, what a wonderful, Dumb and dumber. wonderful what example of why people hate Bad Americans. Bad American tourists, yeah. Yeah. And it, it's it's a stereotype because it's true. Because it's true, yeah. Now, the, go ahead. In your story, does it talk about the fines? It sure does. Okay. It sure does. Because that's what I thought was pretty good. Yeah, the American pair may now face a fine for aggravated damage on a building of historical and artistic interest. Um, If one Russian's experience is anything to go by, the price won't be cheap. Last November, authorities in Rome slapped a 20,000 euro, Mm -hmm. which is approximately $21,000, 20,000 euro penalty on a Russian tourist caught also carving his name in the Colosseum. 42-year-old man was apprehended after a guard at the Colosseum saw him carve the letter... K in a section of brickwork. After the police caught up with him, the man was found guilty of causing aggravated damage, fined, and given a four-month suspended sentence. So the two American women are in for a treat. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and deserve it, as far as I'm concerned. Why would you? And at that point, I'm kind of yeah. down with public flogging, too. <coughs> like, all of a sudden, all caning's back. All of a sudden, caning is a thing. Thank God. I just don't understand people I know, who Molly, think that I just that's can't believe oh, they're not from Florida. Yeah, that's well, we're not done with the show yet. They might be Arizona. What I don't get is I don't get anybody who thinks it's cool to deface something. I just have never been that way. No, yeah. you know what? And I'm I'm on that on that same train. Like I will do a lot of fucked up shit. Maybe sometimes to a lot of people, but I don't really believe in destroying other people's shit and like, yeah. intentionally harming. Like, like you know, how you, like a brand new building gets done, or back in the day when pay phones were put in, somebody ever took on the glass would carve some gang sign or some shit in there. Right. Why? What? What? What do you get out of that? I don't. I just think it looks like shit. Yeah, I get it. You were here. Yeah. yeah. Take a selfie. And, and, uh, exactly, especially now that cameras Take are everywhere. Like, I kind of understand a little bit, like pre-selfie. Like this is your way to leave your immortal mark on the bathroom stall. In the bar, like, please, God, that's, yes. that's where I want to be remembered. Classy. Right. <laughs> but now just take a picture of where Somebody's you dropping a deuce. Oh, my God. Sarah was here. Look, yeah. look at that. <laughs> apparently, I wonder if she shit, too. Apparently, for a good time, uh, I can't quite make out that first digit, but yeah. God, the rest of the numbers. <laughs> Maybe if I just dial all of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How many right. combinations is that going to be? Eight? Right. Seven, eight? But I'm actually kind of excited for, you know, the Italian justice system and the and the hefty, hefty fine mm-hmm. that goes along with that. Yeah. And so. And then for them to start crying, we're going to be poor now. Oh, well, you should have thought of that before. Right. Like, Quit yeah. fucking up our 2,000-year-old shit. Consequences, you fucking you assholes. <laughs> and I, and you, I, I've seen it so many times. Like, one of my wow. first interactions with another American outside of the country <laughs> in dark time. Mm-hmm. Aaron, 8675309. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was this woman just screaming at someone and you could tell like the person that was on the other end of it was like 
I'm I, louder English isn't what I speak like right and just kind of like you know and you just I just picture Roseanne Barr from that SNL Ugh. if I had this kind of power over time and space what the fuck would I be doing talking to you right and this woman was just screaming about something like you're you're out of the country like they don't give a shit like you're yeah calm down you're not <clears throat> that important and now Turns I would be out like in France the customer not always right right yeah and I could I could just I. Now, my, in my mind, they were yelling because there was gluten in their pancake or something in Greece. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but it was it was just something completely ridiculous. And, it, you know, and you're in Greece, and you don't know what the hell, because like, they don't speak, you know, Greek's a dead language. You don't know what the fuck they were, they were speaking. But the woman right. behind the desk was just kind of laughing, like, <laughs> you're, you're just going to have a shitty time for the next two weeks, lady, because you're going off about something. I, and you could just see it on her face, like, okay. Right. Uh, next, she's like, gonna keep screaming for about twenty more minutes. So, anybody else want to come up and? Can you move this shit yeah. show over here? Because I have people to help. <laughs> Did, didn't understand you when it started. Probably not gonna understand you when it ends. Maybe I'm a little bit European because that's how I deal with problem people at the bar too. Like, uh, can we just move this over here so yeah. you can help them? You and just keep screaming because clearly my participation in your right. shout festival makes no my difference. My answer was not helping you, so let me help them in a legitimate way, and then <coughs> we'll come back. Gotcha. Fair point. Yeah. All right, I've beaten that. Done. You're done. That's all I got. My, my, my deal. It's your turn. But <laughs> but in so I I do have to paint a picture of like what a horrible tourist. Well, not a horrible tourist, but are you a bad tourist? Uh, no, I'm. Oh, okay. I I, th- I think I think I'm pretty sensitive to what other people are fucking doing, mostly because I don't care. <laughs> but the first time in 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 <sighs> France when I went to, we just walked by a Burger King, mm-hmm. and you know you 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 do start to crave American, American food. Like right. you you just you want to hear someone speak English. You want to hear a word that mm-hmm. you've. You know, you understand, like you do get that yearning for, like, oh my god, I haven't heard, like, I haven't heard a cheeseburger in a long time. So we walked right. in, and everyone in the restaurant, and I don't know, it must have been a one day thing because I'm sure the people of France just hate me for repeating the story, but everyone in the restaurant was wearing the paper crowns, yes. and I thought it was fucking hysterical. <laughs> so I got one, and I wore that crown for like the entire day in Paris. Well, why wouldn't you? I was the king of the metro, and I was like <laughs> just <laughs> yelling at people that I was the king, and I was like, okay, we have those paper crowns, but aside from three-year-olds, no one puts them on, no one puts them on. and I don't know if it was new, but it was right on the Champs-Élysées, and I don't know if Burger King was new, and they were just trying to like get all of the Burger King experience they could because they were excited to have a Burger King. Yeah, they're you know Burger they're King. they're exciting about something <laughs> different. But oh my god, I just that was just the funniest thing to me. And That's fantastic. I was a King of Z Metro, and I may have been a little bit trashed. <laughs> may you there's a know. possibility they served <clears throat> wine somewhere near that Burger King. Very nice. <laughs> I'm the King of the Wine. <laughs> oh. I'm the King of the Vineyard. Her Royal Highness. Perkins. Well, we'll go from the king of the metro to the queen of stupid shit. Sarah Palin, ladies and gentlemen. Her, hey. new, her new video ad for the Sportsman Channel's Amazing America show shows the former vice presidential candidate hitchhiking in the middle of the desert. Well, however, as every Phoenician who's seen this knows, the right wing celeb is actually standing in central Phoenix at Papago Park. Yeah. Palin standing on one of the park's roads used most frequently by bicyclists and walkers. And if you saw a woman with that suitcase and a sign reading America on that road in Central Phoenix, you might just think that she escaped from the Arizona State Hospital, which is a mere four miles away. (laughs) For fans of the movie Raising Arizona, uh, this might remind them of uh, the viewers when you see a shot of miles of Sonoran Desert that's supposed to be Tempe, Arizona. Uh, now, for a TV show that has <laughs> well enough of a budget to travel across America, you think whoever made this promo could have found a real stretch of lonely highway, but they apparently figured that most of their viewers wouldn't know the fucking difference between the middle of the country's seventh largest city and a random spot in the middle of a desert wasteland. <laughs> like, the river bottom's, what, a mile uh, away? At least that's... It would look... Yeah. I saw that, and I'm like, she's... A hot second from ASU. Oh, yeah. She could see it from where she was. Yeah, kind of like in, Russia. Yeah. When you're in Papago, you can see right across into Tempe. Oh. I just cracked up when I saw where that where that came from. I'm like, are you fucking high? And she is. No. Because she, she responded to something. This cunt tard. <laughs> she responded to something online, and I don't remember what she responded to. And she's clearly drunk. And it was all over addicting info. And her response is like... Info. Okay, either she's just enjoying too much cold medicine, <laughs> which is, it's a delightful, let's just say it. It's got a cool menthol flavor. Well, how can sure. you go wrong? <laughs> Sometimes you but can get it in grape. There is something wackadoodle going on in her world now. 
And, and I just love it. And so she, she's on 64th Street. I wanted to put there, like, you're on a road in Popco Park. It's called 64th Street, Galvin Parkway. It's actually a fucking parkway, you dumbass. I'm pretty sure there's only one road that direction. Anyway, so. Yeah, there's only you one road on there. You're on the road in Popco Park, as it turns out. Do me a little favor, would you please? Sure. Check the connection on the end of that mic. Just Let's just make sure it's in there solid. I keep getting a buzz, Stick and I'm not it sure. In. Stick it in. Seems like it was right. <laughs> See, it comes and goes. Thanks, Thanks. for the encouragement. All right. I think yeah. we, well, right now it's gone. So Thanks for that. I'm and I went with that. dark time. <laughs> dark time. It's my dark time voice. Now it's back. Bastard. What the fuck? <laughs> I can't believe I lost the word for sunset. You, dark, dark time. time. It, almost sound, it almost sounds racist. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. In light of everything happening. Shout out you. to Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know? It's not dark e time. That's a whole oh. different setup there. One of my, like, for no apparent reason, most distinct childhood memories. Honest to God, again, grew up in Salt Lake, home of the white people, right? Yeah. yeah. Swear to God, I, I must have been like seven years old in the backseat of a car driving somewhere, and my grandmother's in the car. And not an especially racist person. Like, you know, my family, pretty okay, you are who you are, we don't care, come yeah. on in. You know, pretty nice people. And I swear to God, like, there was just a black guy standing on the on the corner of the street, <laughs> which is not a thing that you see a whole lot in, 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 in Salt, Salt Lake. Lake. Right. And my grandmother just, you know, calm as could be, was like... Kids, look out the window. There's your color time for the day. Oh, oh no shit! Like, yeah, one of those things that just kind of sticks. Did out. Did you read? Um, I th- think it was announced today about, and I, I l- use this term loosely. Your friends in Utah, my friends, uh, that have voted to allow firing squads. Oh, I, oh, I, I didn't know. I have a happier news out of Utah for that. They've been toying with that because they're <laughs> the best part because there's some problem with lethal injection drugs. Because they they tend to sometimes they don't work and they they have trouble getting doctors I'm that kind will of administer into, them. Well, because didn't they? And I may be just like repeating rumor that I heard from somewhere. I hear the buzzing too now. Yeah. It's weird. Is that coming through to like uh, the people? Yeah. If you hear it, it's coming through. It goes La to the people. Yeah. Yeah. La who? La rasa. Is that how to say the people? Yeah, it means like the, the yeah like the, the, the right. unwashed, the great unwashed. Oh, uh, I yeah. love using the great unwashed. I yeah. say that all the time. I forgot what story I was telling. <laughs> Something lovely about Utah and sure firing nice. squad. Oh, squad. That's what we're talking about. Medication. A dirty rumor you heard. Right. About um, didn't like the effective lethal injection drug like come off the market somehow? Oh, sorry. My bad. It's okay. Uh, yes, and that was one of the problems that they're having trouble getting the they're one. They're having trouble making a nice cocktail now. Yeah, because the manufacturer doesn't want to be the person that makes kill people drugs. Like somebody got a conscious. Yeah. But I love it, and I didn't realize well, that nobody wants to be known. For it is that, right. Utah's the dark time place. Sure, Utah is that yes. what we're talking about? Yes. yes, that they just stopped <laughs> firing squads in like 2004. Yes, just a hiatus. Yeah, I, no. I heard that today on the news. I'm like, what? A ten year hiatus. <laughs> like, why no, not? Be, know, why not a guillotine if we're going with? You know what I mean? And I kind of, since we're going to derail all, all together, I kind of am on board with that because you know what I mean, like. If you're going to kill me anyway, like, I'd rather suffer. Go on now. Blaze of glory is what you're trying to say? Mm-hmm. Well, no, because allegedly, you know, firing squad, they're aiming for the head. It's going straight through. Whereas, you know, the stories that we've that we've seen about lethal injection gone wrong. Right. It takes minutes, even hours. And allegedly, I would assume there would be some suffering happening there. Mm-hmm. I'd rather one and done and be gone really quick. So I. I <laughs> one and done. <laughs> one and. <laughs> happens all of a sudden. And how many people are shooting at the same time? Mm, isn't there? And can I dress up like some character from Zorro? Oh my God, yes! How many people does it take to make a squad? Because it's a firing squad. Is there, That's a, what is I mean. there right. a number? Because isn't there in a firing squad? There's a limited number of live ammunition. Everyone shoots, and everyone's a sharpshooter. Um, but most have blanks, and so nobody actually knows Which oh, one who made them? the kill shot. Right. So nobody oh. actually knows whether they shot the live bullet or the blank. I never heard. Oh, I feel like that. I, I feel like this is maybe, a Googleable story. Maybe I, know, Google. maybe I know too much about that. Sounds exciting, like <laughs> firing squads. Who, yeah, yeah, I yeah I feel like maybe you you Googled this before. I feel like I don't know. I read a lot. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad you do. It, I mean, sometimes reading is fundament, fundamental. Fundamental. Fun fundamental. Speaking, not so much, but reading. <laughs> sure. Speaking overrated. Gotcha. Have we mentioned that Marnie's not here? Yep, a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> As I just noticed. Oh, well, you were sitting in her chair. I know. Well. And then when I got out of it, I'm like, oh, look. <laughs> like there's nobody thing. in that chair anymore. The, the girl with the hat's not here. Yeah, yeah that's all right. She'll figure it out somehow. <laughs> sometime. It, it'll work out. <laughs> all right. That's all a good right. idea. we got to come back in just a minute with what we call the drinking word. Some more headlines. We'll talk about all kinds of stuff. Al's going to try not to cough through most of his segment. 
No promises, though. No, none at all. All right, kids. Everybody's in the chat room. Jenny, Don, Aaron from LA, Harrison, my mom, bag of nope, Dr. Hey. Ben Carlson. Oh, that's true. So many people. Thanks for joining us in the chat room. Let us know if we don't already. Let us know where you're listening from. And if there's something you would like for us to talk about that we haven't covered, you'd like us to, t- to talk about, tell us. We'll do it. We, oh, ain't, sure. we ain't scared. <coughs> we'll talk about things we don't know about. We, we do it all the time. Yeah. It's called Tuesday Night. My next story I know next to nothing about. It's, it's so exciting. Stick it. around for that, won't you? We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to the show on Q Talk America. This is Q Talk America. The following broadcast contains adult humor, language, and topics, along with partial nudity. Actual knowledge is used sparingly. The show is a result of a lost bet and a bad game of rock, paper, scissors. It's the show with Clayton McKee. And now, a man with a face for radio, Clayton McKee. Well, hi again, everybody. Top of the 8 o'clock hour. We call it hour two right here in central Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks for joining us. This is the show on Q Talk America. It's Kat Carlson, Al Perkins, and me. I'm Clayton McKee. Marnie Ryer is under the weather, not joining us this week. She'll probably be back next week. Who knows? Allegedly. Maybe not. You'll have to tune in to find out. But before we go any further, we must take care of some official business, and it sounds a little bit like this. And now, a drink along. We dare you to stay awake during this royalty-free music and to play a drinking game with us. If you are currently, or soon to be, driving a car, you cannot play. If you are presently the primary caregiver for children and or the elderly, you may desperately want to play, but... If you are listening from a rehab facility, you are disqualified because you already hit bottom. And that means you already won this game at least once. If playing this game is in any way illegal for you, put the bottle down and make better life choices. There is no good in your goodbye, and there is no lifeguard on duty, so you will be swimming at your own risk. Tell your lawyer to take the fucking day off. You can't sue us. We warned you. Good luck. <laughs> Well, we have to make it dark time now. <laughs> oh, oh, Clearly. is that going to be our drink here? Yeah, you, you... Dark time. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you gotta just play it off as I'm not having a stroke, you know what I mean? <laughs> that might also be the title of tonight's show, too. I dark know. time. I do love dark time. <laughs> I like that, <laughs> Nand. Sometimes I smell vanilla. Okay, you might want to get a medical attention really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... No, there was some smelling toast earlier. I don't know what was happening. Lots of yeah. st- stuff going on all over. They're over. stroking out left and right. I don't know. Dropping like flies. We induce strokes now. <laughs> we induce strokes. That's comforting, isn't it? Oh. Uh, we, we cause the dark time. Because of dark time, exactly. The dark time of your youth. Oh. Well. Speaking of dark time. Everybody's done a little dark time in their youth, though. That's a good time. <laughs> dark time again has come to the Clintons. Oh. <laughs> Hillary Rodham Clinton has not yet... Even announced that she's running for president, but the spectacle of the Clinton years is unfolding yet again. Touched off by the controversy over her practice of using a private email account rather than an official one while she was Secretary of State. That's right. Our Secretary of State was using her Gmail account for official business. And apparently that's a really big deal. But they all, because Carl, it didn't become a law till after she left. They, didn't I read that it was 2013 that they yes, made it, it official? Like. Right. It was reckoned because Colin pa- Colin Powell didn't use one either. Right, because it, it's a whole lot of freaking out over nothing. Because at the time, it was like suggested that you use the government email, and and there was a time when she didn't even have a government email. Right. Like, yeah. It, but it's been. I'm still with Bill.gov. I'm still with Bill.gov. <laughs> fancy, the, uh, fancy, did, uh, fancy. Uh, but I'll tell you what, CNN <laughs> is all the fuck over this. Oh. Of course like they will. Crazy. So it's, it's not fantastic. Fox. Hopefully, it's just you know what I don't. I wasn't watching Fox today. I had, oh, I, just, I had the CNN on. Somebody usually talks about some stupid thing that Fox did. Yeah. So. No. The the reason that I looked it up and and had I really anticipated to ignore the headline segment and read it for later, but mm. I thought it was a good segue with the Palin thing to, to bring oh, it up it now and our think, political segment and see if and see if either of you knew anything about it. And I heard now I slept through it, but I heard I was, I was in my own dark time. I heard that she did. <laughs> I heard that she did a twenty minute press conference today uh-huh. on it and just said like. Maybe not the best idea, but right. 
Good. Shit happened. Oh. Yeah. Nobody died. Get over it. Did you see the SNL She wasn't skit? hacked, uh, although everyone else was. Right. But, I mean, since we're spying on everybody's email, like, we've already proven we can get into anybody's email. Anyways, what's the difference? Did you yeah. see the SNL skit that they did about it? Not yet. I haven't watched it yet. I heard it, and it was very funny because she was, the whoever's playing Hillary, one of the lines is, she talks about, um, well, and here, there's here's this harmless email that was to my wonderful husband, Bill. And she goes in and read it along with me. Dear sir or madam. <laughs> she starts yeah. this whole thing about scheduling time to, to meet and caress. It was very funny. It sounded funny. I didn't see it, but it sounded funny. <clears throat> they that did. I think The fun. View did. Uh, I saw it on the uh, a clip of it on The View. They talked oh. about it. <laughs> Who's on The View these days? Anybody anymore? Or they all leave. It's still Nicole. It's no, it's it's. Um, I do love Nicole Wallace. It's Rosie, so Whoopi's still there. Wh- Whoopi, Rosie, Perez, and uh, Nicole, and then they have a guest host. They're I guess swinging a somebody guest. through all the time, right? The, that fourth person. Yeah, and I think by the end of the year they're going to announce. I think if they if ABC cancels Christella, which it looks like they're going to on Friday nights, that Christella might end up being the last one. They might stick with the comic. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, because you need a little comedy, because otherwise yeah. it gets really boring. Which is why we stopped <clears throat> watching when Rosie left the first time. No, well, really uh, Joy, wah, wah. well, actually, what's her face was always Joy funny. Joy was amazing. Yeah, Joy was always funny. But Meredith Vieira is a funny bitch. Yeah, she has dark time all the time, and she's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and when they when they hired her for um, the Today Show, I was like, Do you guys watch the show? Because right. do you guys she has what a she does? filthy mouth right. in, a, in a really revolved, if you will, sense oh. of humor. Oh, I don't even know what that means. I may have to Google that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I don't know. It's but, dirty. You know we're. We're like a year and a half away from another presidential election, and the circus already begins. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And but God she still hasn't. Planners. She still hasn't announced in the mm. right. She hasn't announced. And, at and all. now because the, everyone is steering clear, I think that the 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 um, I think now it's become the the accepted. What I'm is pretty that? sure the, everybody's the, just the, assuming the conventional wisdom is mm-hmm. they don't want a primary, they don't want a primary season. They just want her, and it's kind of an, an anointing, which she may need to be primaried a little bit. Right. But that they're not, that, like, they might send up a somebody fake that's going to stay oh, in for, sure. like, two debates. Because you get no debates, you get, but at this point, doesn't everyone either like her or hate her? Right. Yeah. And I kind of got that impression from everything I've been reading about this. Like, everyone's just falling back to their... It's all really assumed, like, everything you ever read that has her name in it is just the presumptive... You know, presidential yeah. nominee. The but she still has an announcement where it's it's getting to be time where you have to at least announce because it well, was, you got to start fundraising soon, which she already is. They're I mean, already that, doing yeah, it. That, well, they're doing it ready for, her, for which Hillary. Is really fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, I donated twice. What already? No, uh, and the people are they're raising the Democratic for whoever comes up. But at this point, like you got to, I think we need at least a fake someone. We need or to like other. go through the motions and not just be like, yeah, she's been our girl for. <laughs> And it's very strange that Biden is not – Biden is – it's just an odd situation that Biden, whose age I don't know. Is he a year old? Is he – Uncle Joe's kind of old. Well, Uncle so is she. Joe. She's <laughs> – and, and we've talked about this several times that now there's a whole generation of people that don't think of presidents as being old white men. Right. Like we've – it's been 20 – Three years. It'll be 24 years since Clinton was elected. Wow. We haven't had a president over 50 – in a generation of voters. Right. So there is an age question to her of people being like now thinking there's a whole now, generation now that now thinks to, oh she's kinda old. Right. right. Well old people can be president. People sure. in their dark time. Yeah. <laughs> right. And they they sure do know their dark time. And Uncle Joe sure <laughs> is in dark time. That that, that man is seventy two years old. Seventy two. So he's mm-hmm. he's three or four years older than her because I think she would be I think she'll be I think she's sixty eight now or sixty seven now. As, same age as my mother, yes. I think that's right. <laughs> Because I remember Sorry, he- hearing that if she if she was elected, <laughs> she would be sixty nine years old when she got sworn in. Yes, Hillary is sixty seven. Okay, yeah, that, Born that, that, October twenty six, nineteen forty seven. So she wouldn't be older than Reagan, but she would be an old. She would be an older president. Pretty old, sure. And so there's that that ages, and that's just it's not because of any kind of like bad thing that's happening. Yeah, it's because a generation of people only knows three younger presidents. But I th- I think that that whole like first woman president thing kind of. Trumps on top of the age. No, it thing. does. It I, does. You know but I, mean? but like, I think every I think everyone pretty much already knows. There's no one that sees Hillary Clinton and doesn't already have an opinion. Right. Like in this email thing didn't be like, Oh, I guess I, I don't like her. I guess I do want to vote for Jeb Bush. 
Which is Oof. why I couldn't believe it she was used an all unse- day long. She she used an unsecure email, and then you read that Jeb Bush never had an official email either, and no. he's still and he hasn't run in fifteen years. But it's just it's really funny when they they tell you the uh, the 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 double standard that they're using is mm-hmm. like they're listing the people that Jeb Bush has never had an official email because he hasn't run for anything in like sixteen years. Mm-hmm. So he's he ha- can't address this either. He has no leg to stand on. Because he never had one, mm-hmm. right? Using his hotmail or whatever the hell. And then he was Lindsey using. Graham, mm-hmm. who's you know the, the what is he? The, he's in charge of like the technology department of Congress. Has never sent an email. <laughs> Did you read that? Uh, there's that, and the it other works. guy. Who's the other one? The one who doesn't believe in NASA or space exploration is, is now in, in charge of charge of what? yeah, who who charge hell? of appropriations what for they, space exploration. The, is it just yeah. a shell game? And whatever name is under it is he, oh, you get a department, you get a department. Yeah. What the hell is that about? Yes, and that is how it worked. It's asinine. It's madness. Um, And yes, the Clintons did just become grandparents, which she's going to milk, too. Well, yeah. I mean, you know that that kid's going to be a campaigner. I did a dance competition two years ago and had the kids run out like, fuck yeah, you trot those kids around. Oh, yeah. Ah, Sure. Use them for what you can, especially if they're cute. And it's not a family of lookers, so you got to get them when they're still, you know. Get them while they're real cute. Before yeah. the dark time and hits. And bundled up. <laughs> yeah. Before or the, the light time. Right. Yeah. The light hits, I'm like, ooh. Before the braces mm. and the crimping iron. Yeah, hit. exactly. Well, it's, oh, oh poor thing. It wasn't, it wasn't Amy Carter, for God's sakes. Come on. True story. <clears throat> yes. Carry on. What's next? Uh, while I'm reading this story, would you swap mics and try to bring that one in? Just just mm. see if can it can it reach over there? Of course it can. And then you just use it only. Yeah, let's do that. I look at look at the changes we're making. See how this turns out for us. Hello. Oh, we'll get Heller. the hurler. Oh. Hurler. Oh, much better. That fucking hum was driving me crazy. All right, here we go. An 85 year old man Clayton turned down a Hummer. Whoa! <laughs> <coughs> dark times. Yeah. Dark, dark times. Dark times for all. An 85 year old man says his suburban Cleveland home has been pelted with eggs several times a week for over a year. And police have not been able to crack the unusual case despite stakeouts, questioning neighbors, installing a surveillance camera, and even testing eggshells as evidence. The homeowner and uh, Euclid police suspect that the eggs are launched from a block or two away. Albert Clemens Sr. Uh, said whoever is responsible has, quote, phenomenal accuracy. <laughs> Launching five or six at a time and often hitting the front door of the green two-story home that he and his late wife bought nearly six decades Ago, the after dark attacks, dark ti- <coughs> the dark time attacks, uh, sometimes sound like gunshots as eggs splatter on the aluminum siding, creating a residue that eventually strips the paint from the siding. Uh, he used to clean up the mess each time, but he quit because it happens far too often now. His insurance company will not settle the claim until the police catch the vandal or vandals, so Clemens is waiting until then to make. Uh, exterior repairs to his home. He refuses to move from the home, which is on a corner and oddly just less than a mile from the police station. He says, I would live and die in this house, but it's been kind of a nightmare, uh, he said. Officers have not determined a suspect or a specific motive, though they do have their suspicions. Somebody with a fucking egg launcher, people. Somebody is deeply, deeply angry at somebody <laughs> in that house for some reason. Deeply, deeply angry. According to Lieutenant Mitch Hauser, police traced the eggs to a local Amish farm but fingerprinting shattered eggshells proves useless because egg proteins destroy DNA. Door-to-door questioning yields yielded no tips, and a uh, $1,000 reward for information yet remains unclaimed. Did the investigators ask the homeowner if he had ever pulled up behind the Amish buggy and laid on the horn real fast to make the horse shit itself? That sounds like a good time. Because that's this is what's happened. Yeah. Oh. The Amish eggs... <laughs> Tipped me right off. So here's what no, happened. Michelle, it's a, right. The homeowner probably thinks it's a lot of fun to scare the shit out of those horses. No. So you just pull up real quiet and slow behind the buggy. Like, they, you know, they drive on the road. Like you do. Like you do in traffic. And then all of a sudden when nobody's suspecting anything, wah, you lay on the horn. The horse. No, you, I, you I, didn't live in any no, Amish no, country. I, but no, I, no, I get what you're saying. I yeah. totally understand it, but I don't know. I don't know about this. I'm pretty sure. I'm, um, I just solved the case. Oh, yes. <laughs> well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's like murder she wrote over here. Yeah. Jessica Fletcher. 
Cat You're Carlson. You're welcome. The person or people who are doing it have remained very tight-lipped, apparently, Hauser said. Uh, I would imagine it would be hard to keep a secret of something that has been done hundreds of times and for nobody to step forward and to talk about it. Unless you're Amish Unless and have you're no Amish. way to communicate nope. with right, other people. Exactly. Because they are not No social them. media, no telephones, no nothing. The news updates are not coming to them. They are whispering about it in the cornfield. Now, police have spent hundreds of hours. There's a confession written on the back of the the oven. Yes, the heater that you bought. Yes. The Amish heater. Oh, my God. That fireplace thing. Yes. The police have spent <laughs> hundreds of hours on the investigation, but their involvement doesn't seem to be a deterrent. Once an egg hit an officer in a foot as he stood uh, taking a report of the vandalism. What? The egging has been rarer during cold weather, but officials believe that with the anticipation of or the uh, attacks will increase while temperatures also increase we're not going to let it go hauser said we will continue to put forward an effort until we figure out what's going on because it's harder to aim after dark time <clears throat> yeah after dark time yeah <laughs> dark time does hinder yeah uh-huh. hinder now here's why i only had a driver's license in the snowy parts for a short while because one of my favorite things to do <laughs> was you know when at the end of the winter when there's nothing but snow walls and everything's been uh-huh. plowed and there's no more sidewalks so you have to walk in the street and it would be even better now that i have a um a hybrid so the oh, car doesn't make any noise sneak up on you yeah but the best part is is everyone's wearing like hoods, hoods and, hats. and hats and so their hearings and you get up right behind them and you lay on the horn and you make them jump into the snow bank good times yeah god <laughs> I that do was that. so much fun. And I would try to do it to people I knew. Yeah. Because strangers I, might die. I do that all the time to my family. Like, I'll be out because I'm always first in the car for some reason because I'm ready to go. Like, everybody else is still dicking around, putting on shoes and doing their hair. And I don't know what the fuck they do. I'm ready. So I'm like, I'm going to meet you in the car. So I go and I get in the car. And the way, the way that I park in my garage, it's hard for, like, the passenger side to get in. So I politely pull the car out and position it. And so as people walk across the front to go across, Sharon likes this. She likes it a lot. No, she doesn't. Yeah. Because <laughs> she's eyeballing me the whole time going, don't fucking do don't it. Don't fucking, fucking do, do it. it. And the minute she breaks that eye contact <laughs> thinking that she's one. No, and I would, I would like lay on the horn. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and just watch the people in their little snowmobile suits. <laughs> <laughs> Make yellow snow. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, special light time for them. Uh, oh. Uh, speaking of dark times and criminal activity. A Maryland couple who was being investigated for allowing their two children to walk home alone from a neighborhood park have been found responsible for unsubstantiated (laughs) child neglect by the state's Child Protective Services. That's right. A Maryland couple was being investigated for letting their kids, uh, six and ten years old, walk home from the park about a half a mile from their house. In a follow-up, as the case continues, um, Danielle and Alexander uh, Mayativ of Silver Springs, Maryland, were practicing so-called free-range parenting, a philosophy that encourages <laughs> right, <laughs> philosophy that encourages children to have some independence. In this case, it means they allow their two children, ages 10 and 6, to play outside and walk home by themselves. Well, state of Maryland, nay, nay, say no. nay. Mm. No, no. Maryland Child Protective Services has accused the family of neglect, saying that unless they commit to a safety plan, their kids are going to go into foster homes. Because uh, everything's it, delightful, and there's no right. dark times in there's foster homes. There's a good homes. idea. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, these poor kids are in such danger for their t- from their 10-minute walk. Let's put them in a fucking foster home. Are they, are they walking at dark time? Uh, yeah. No, I, you know what? Uh, I haven't seen anything. Oh, okay. I've, I've actually been kind of following the story a little bit because it... It seems Trying really. To think of implementing it at your household. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? And we and we kind of do. And <sighs> our oldest is nine right now. And I'm kind of like, like we go together to the park, which is literally half a mile from our house. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's through a neighborhood, and um, we live on like right on a main road. And if we didn't live on a main road, the kids would be outside unattended a whole lot more often. Right, yeah. But there's a whole lot of fucking traffic there. And I'm like, eh, that's probably not okay. Mm-hmm. But I've, we've actually been kind of debating on whether or not they're old enough to kind of go on their own and, you know, like, oh, I'll meet you at the park or, you know, here's a watch, come home in an hour. Mm-hmm. Right. You know. And here's, so I've, Here's a watch. This is these hands move. Do right. the kids no. not know how to tell time? No, of course <clears throat> they know how to tell oh. time. Well, you know, here's a watch. Like you're introducing it to them for the first time. No, the, well, because... <laughs> Because I've bought several of them and they get lost. Oh. No, there's a thing. Okay. Yeah. No, those were the first two things that I taught taught uh, the oldest was to tie his shoes and to tell time. Oh. Like, these are the most important things to me at your age right now. Let's do this. 
I'd like yeah, some t- so, tutoring in those two items after the I, show. Now I sure, <laughs> I remember there was a big there was a big age thing when I was young, you know, in the 1830s. Right. Me and Dark Laura, times. Ma- me and Laura Ingalls. <laughs> <laughs> Before she had a wilder, yeah, knee, yeah wilder mm. knee Ingalls. Um, <laughs> that you had to be ten to like leave the eyesight of like the nine million neighborhood people that were watching right. you. But at ten, you, we could go past. I could ride my bike past like the corner. Sure. Like I could turn the corner onto another street. But that but ten was the cutoff. Like up until ten I had to stay where everybody on the block could see me. Right, stay on your street, sure. Yeah. But after ten we could, you know, we could journey the world and by twelve it was like, you know, there's your bike, try to be home by dinner and Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe learned a, a signal fire. <clears throat> it had to have been I had to have been twelve or thirteen and my younger sister and I were just latchkey kids from, you know, three o'clock till seven. We were home on our own and cooking dinner and whatever and mm-hmm. inviting all the neighborhood kids over to, to hang out like we weren't supposed to like you know yeah like you do um but anyway this particular case yeah this is all that happened was the the family was out and about and they said yep kids go you know go home or meet us at home and the kids were walking unattendedly home from wherever they had been the you know the park or the neighbor's house or whatever it was and uh cop pulls up says hey what, what are you guys doing where are your parents and the kids are like oh we're walking home. This is what's going on. And so the cop, like, um, picked the kids up, took them home, questioned the parents, reported it, got CPS involved, and it's a whole thing. Uh, apparently in Silver Spring, uh, Maryland, leaving anyone under the age of 18 unsupervised constitutes neglect. Hmm. Wow. I know. I know. And so CPS uh, actually found the family guilty of neglect. Um, that is crazy. That's crazy times. Right. I mean, six... I do agree that six is a little young. Yeah, but with with an older sibling. But in ten, ten, ten you're right at the oh. cutoff of like, right? Okay, how far were they? How far were sure. we walking? Like, how many how many dark places did we walk right. by? Well, and I can't tell you how many times I heard like straight <clears throat> there and back. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I get it. But yeah, so I I um, is that the end of my article? Yeah, that's pretty much the end of my article. Yeah, they've they've been <clears throat> uh. Not not fined or punished in any way, but CPS is certainly involved and, and will be involved for quite some time just for letting their kids yeah. walk home alone. I, I mean, and, and I, 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 I do think six is a little... I mean, I was I was walked to school. I mean, the school was... You could see my grade school from my house. Mm-hmm. But I was walked to school. And I, I really think 10 was when, like, that was the cutoff or when I could, like... Sure. I didn't need someone to... I just remember that, that being a big thing with my bike and everything. With Double ten, digits and you can go to the next block <clears> and... Yeah, like you could go to someone's house sure. un- unattended. Right. Well, and I... Um, Sharon recently posted something about... And I, like, I remember the only questions about going to someone's house were like, do they have doors? You know what I mean? Like, right. door, do they have windows? Do, do things shut? <laughs> Are you protected from the elements? Like, there was no, like, I don't know that... I don't know your friend's mother. Like, I right. the, the one kid that I hung out with... I, I still don't know if my parents ever met Tim's parents, to be honest with you. Like, I don't, I'm sure they have, mm, sure. but, like, it was certainly not an organized meeting of, let's find out what kind of people, you know, these are that, and and not for my parents, because Tim was always at my house. Like, I'm sure the conversation was like, so what kind of freaks <laughs> raise this thing? Because, you know, Tim's at my house, like, every day for seven years. Like, I don't, and I don't know if they ever... Sure. Maybe at the grocery store, they were like, oh, I think, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I think that kid that comes over all the time is yours. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't remember any kind of organized meeting of like, oh, you guys are okay to hang out. or You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I like, don't know. all that weird shit. Like, I, I can't imagine my no, mother I... being... I can't imagine my mother being that sociable. I remember my mother occasionally calling other parents. I could rely on that, because I could always get away with saying I was at someone's house, because my mom would never call to, yeah. to find out if I was there. No, I remember, um, like, my mom would call and, you know, verify plans, because I was perhaps known for maybe making a little bit more or less of a story when I wanted to. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think it's because my sisters were so good. Sure. Or pretended to be good so well. Didn't get my caught. my middle sister. Right. And happy birthday to her. <clears throat> that my parents just assumed that I would be the same straight shooter. Sure. Not realizing that it was, you know, just all just lies, like... <laughs> Yeah, we're over there, but we really walked to the mall. Right. But by 12, we were, I mean, my parents knew we were walking to, and the mall was not close. The mall was at the other end of our little town. Like, that was a long fucking walk. At least you were getting some exercise. Yeah. Focus on the Look positive. See? <laughs> Look at all the good you've done. God, when I think back to all of the time, the 
yeah, we rode everywhere. We're all over the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. In it, there were forts and woods that were uncharted all oh my around God, our the neighborhood. Unsafe things that we nailed oh together God. out of shit that we'd pulled out of people's trash cans. There was also a yeah. train track just down. The, like our the neighborhood was on like on a here, and then you'd go down a hill, and there was a train track that came through multiple times a day. We'd go down. Of course, you well, you, you put quarters on train tracks to so watch the train just smash the shit out of them. Well, sure. And we just sit right there. The train the train was as close as your face like, is to like me. Like brushing your hair, right? Back. Right there. We like we just sit right there, and the train would go by, and we just be that watching. That was like the summer oh I was God. fourteen. That we would. Mm-hmm. I mean, those and that was. And now, like now, when I read books or I, I I see movies about stuff, I'm like, we were gone, gone. Like this was this was out in like the country part of Niagara mm-hmm. Falls. Like this was like it wasn't even Niagara Falls, and we had left the city limits into like town of something a township i think it's called i think it was called wheatfield or something like that was the name of the town but we would ride our bike so far out and sit near these train tracks it was very stand by me if you've ever seen that movie Mm -hmm. and we would sit out there me and tim and this girl that he was let's call it dating sure and um (laughs) talking about pat benatar records and like but it was a it was far 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 away and like even at this point i like even now as an as an adult I would be like, if I found out my kid was that far away right. on a bike, like no one around if anything happened, no one knew where we was and no one would sure. find us. We were like out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Donna saying we feel. <clears throat> yeah. W- w- Sawyer Road. Yeah. Like way out there by train tracks, Don. And and we were not doing anything. This was before I learned to do anything bad. Right. This was, this was you know, pre-pot and, you know, most liquors. Sure. <laughs> Most. I'd had a couple Most. rubbing. Most. Oh, Most. Come on. I wasn't I wasn't packing at the time, but it was it was just really to me that was that was bad parenting on my parents to not ask. But it was summertime and you just You just went. You, you checked, got up you, in the morning, you, you had checked breakfast. in at dawn and you, we showed up at four thirty. My family had dinner at four thirty every night. Mm-hmm. No excuses, no stories. If you didn't have a job, we ate together at four thirty PM. Every day of my life, like there was wow, that's fantastic. And you were back at four thirty, and there was no four thirty one. Like mm-hmm. we, and that was the one thing you were not late for was we, we ate at four thirty. Boyfriends, you know, my sister's boyfriend was there every single day, and, and you just knew like four thirty was dinner time, and there with that was not negotiable, and there was you did not miss that for anything. That's like fantastic. you were back for four thirty dinner. That seems awfully early to me. <clears throat> well, it's because my dad worked midnight, so he had to go back to bed. And my mom worked like uh, eight to whatever, seven to three. She worked the Mm -hmm. morning shift. So it was the time. But 4.30 was decided before I was born. And it went on until my my dad died. Like 4.30 was dinner time. And there was, Mm -hmm. I mean, that that was non-negotiable. That was the one thing in our house that was a a non-negotiable. And even like like a holiday meal happened at 4.30. Wow. So you would have lunch or something to hold you over while everything like, but you ate whatever that meal was, 4.30, and it was sharp. Right in the middle of Mike Douglas. You'd have to stand up in the middle of Mike Douglas. And... Oh, God. You only had a DVR oh, back then. And the TV had to be off. Oh. The, TV, there. the TV was, there was no, no, there was no TV for that like half hour in, the, in our family. Like no t- dinner. That's good. I mean, no dinner, no TV, just, just dinner. And I mean, right. that was locked. Hmm. And if you had a job, that was the only reason. Like when we got jobs, if you had to work at 4th, that was the only reason you missed it. But people would show up at our house at 4.30. Knowing. Knowing for that, dinner. that sure. food was being served. Like that's where we were. And we would leave pools. We would leave parties. Like we just left and went and sat as a family at 4.30 p.m. Which is actually a really nice time because then you've got lots of time to go do other shit. And then at 5, you're out of there and going doing something else. Oh, Jenny, there was tons of talking. Oh, my God. It, it was bad ribald jokes it was it was bad jokes and conversation and oh. my dad telling dirty jokes and everyone talking about their day and screaming and yelling and fighting or laughing and everyone was involved and like the table would get bigger and bigger if you know if tim was over for dinner or if yeah. my sister's boyfriend future husband but you you came over at four and there was no wasn't a cafeteria as my dad would say right it's not a cafeteria it's four thirty. <laughs> My mom used to say, "I'm not a short order cook. You get what I cook, and you get it when I cook it." Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That that, that was that yeah. was the general message. <laughs> Here's what I we did, you know. I found out later that my mom thing. was a terrible I, cook. Yeah. I remember mom saying about basically the same thing. Because mm-hmm. Harrison just told me like her um, like she doesn't like oatmeal because her mom couldn't cook oatmeal, and I was I was thinking to myself like, how can anyone fuck up oatmeal? And then I remember like my mom's macaroni and cheese was just atrocious. Oh. And to this day, I still hate macaroni and cheese because that woman just made it. I don't know what the hell she did wrong, but. <laughs> <laughs> How she can take macaroni and cheese Just and make it a dish that up. I couldn't even tolerate? I don't know. 
It's some ancient Chinese secret. It's some dark time in the Ruthie <laughs> the land. The world may skills. never know. Yeah. Two, yeah. I have a specific set of skills. And macaroni and cheese was up. not on that woman's <laughs> list. That was, oh, it was awful. <laughs> My fear is that the rest of the world was using fake cheeses and she was trying to do something with like something real. Mm. Like she was trying to use a real cheese and it just, it, uh, that, that ship sank. That was dark times. Dark. Whenever that casserole dish came out, I'd be like, oh. oh not that again. So five no, o'clock, good. I'd be at the neighbor's house. My mother won't feed me. Can you have something to eat? <laughs> I used to do that after my own dinner. Like I would eat. I was the bottomless pit child, so I would eat my own dinner and then go over to a friend's house, and they weren't quite done. I'd be like, "What do you got?" Oh, I'd go to all. And the- I'd sit down and I'd eat a whole other plate. Oh. I would just no? ask people, "What's your What's your mom making?" Because you know, I grew up in sure. an Italian Polish neighborhood. Oh, sure. So everybody's food was better than ours. Yeah. So I would always be like five minutes, and I would, I would in my mind, they used to. My mom didn't tell me, so we were both much older, and she was sharing like the list of horrible things that I did as a child. But the worst one was that I would go knock on people's door and say that she wouldn't feed me. And I was a really, <laughs> really skinny kid. And so it really looked like I hadn't eaten. <laughs> and the Italian woman would be like, please come in and sit down to this. Deli-. And I would just eat the, like, the pasta <laughs> and swear to them that my mom won't feed me. And my mom used to, she used to cry. She used to sit at home and cry. Aww. She was so sick. She's like, everyone else eats it. And I just, I was such a, such a terrible eater that I just wouldn't eat. Frosted Flakes was one of the few things that you could sit me down to. Like, if oh. I could hit Frosted Flakes for dinner, I would eat it every night. Uh-huh. But I was just, I was just, the, I was the worst child. I'm surprised that no one ever, like, beat me or, like, sent me out to pick. Because I just would not eat anything. <laughs> if it wasn't peanut butter and jelly or macaroni, I was just like, oh, I And yet you that. survived. Look at and you. got fat because I found bread. Because then I found out about, then we all found out the secret of Italian bread from Di Camillo's and that I'd eat that, like, by the loaf. Nice. Turns out peasant portions are what I was looking for. It was just the funniest <laughs> thing. But I would go, and I would just go, I would kind of like sniff out the, na- literally sniff out the neighborhood. Like, that, that, smells, that, smells, that smells like pierogies. I'm going to go knock on their door. My mom I love pierogies. Me. And then it was always like begging for money for UNICEF. Like my mom would, adu- she would, she would, she would sign God. up for everything and she would give me the box and make me go door to door to, to collect money from all these women that were constantly, and they would always say, oh, Alfie, come on in and eat. Because <laughs> I, I would say, what are you cooking? Every, I, I, if I had ethnic parents, I would have ate better. But the white Fair people, point. me and the white people were just not meant to live together. Damn the white people. Yeah, damn, <laughs> down with the, remember the dark times? <laughs> 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 oh, fish sticks. There was there was a uh, oh, I love fish sticks. <laughs> um there were uh Oh my god, my mom got on this fish stick craze for a while and those are filthy. And we like seafood. Like and we weren't poor. I mean, we did go through a, a dark time where we were pretty broke cuz we were like supporting 18,000 white people, but Oh my god, my mom got on this thing that fish sticks were a real food. They were filthy. Those <laughs> things were filthy. And then homemade french fries which should never happen mm-hmm. no you, it's like it's like barbecue sauce fuck you don't make your own just go to the store and buy them you know what mm-hmm. i mean there's a reason why they have perfected this yeah oh my mom would make that fish sticks and and french fry combo i was filthy everything was soggy and wet and oh god and i always remember we had to make our oftentimes we made our own tartar sauce yeah you just you whipped it together okay. relish and miracle whip or something and you try to i'm like no, it's not the same. <laughs> not the same. It's like, have, it's like eating a hot dog on a flat piece of bread. And you have to just wrap it around it and oh, make it the bun. Yeah. And I don't know what the difference is between enriched flour and enriched flour, but when it's shaped like bread, it is not a bun. <laughs> These are not the <laughs> same creature at all. Not negotiable. Not at all. Not at all. Mother would burn them. Oh, <clears throat> oh, the Dark fish times sticks. everyone has had. Yes. <laughs> sad, sad. Back to me, cat. Yeah, do you have another story? I have Uno Oh, look at that. oh well, and be right was Tim cute. Yes, Tim was Tim was really cute. Uh a thirty two year old woman told police that she got naked and sat outside a Dunkin' Donuts as a dare. At a girl. Did she win? Well, we're gonna get to that. The Palm Beach Post reports that Shakara Martin was arrested a Sunday near West Palm Beach, Florida. <laughs> According to a police report, Martin told authorities the dare was a part of a pledge to get into a dance troupe, which by the way, the dance troupe was not identified. <laughs> Witnesses told police that Martin was offered clothes several times, but she refused to take them. But then she began apologizing when police arrived. <laughs> she faces a charge of indecent exposure. Martin appeared in court on Monday and was released on her own recognizance. It was not clear whether she retained an attorney. There is no phone number listed, and it is unknown 
whether she got into that dance troupe or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, God love her for trying, though. <laughs> she was a looker, too. You can Google that and check that picture out. Woo, dark, dark times. Indeed. <clears throat> I'm going to be saying that all week. Dark times, indeed. Dark times. <laughs> dark. The, dark t- the dark time. Next time somebody Fuck tells dark, me you mean sunset? No, the next time somebody tells me their tale of woe, yeah. which will be like probably tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Like, dark, dark times, times indeed. Indeed, <laughs> sir. I keep saying that phrase that you got me hooked on. Somebody will say something like, it's been a hell of a dance scene, sir. Hell of a dance scene, sir. Uh, <laughs> I love that movie. Somebody recently posted about like um, Goldie Hawn guilty pleasure movies, and I was like, duh, overboard. Go- Goldie Hawn had like 11 All solid of her years movies of were guilty, uh, yeah, pleasure. guilty yeah. pleasures. And not even guilty, but foul play. Yeah. When that came on HBO with Kojak, bang, bang. I I quoted that movie forever. Plus, it opens with a Barry Manilow song with a, a shot of the Pacific Coast Highway. How can you go wrong? But Overboard is one of the first movie that anyone yeah. ever asked me to change seats. Like the usher came down the aisle and was like, um, "You you you, you got to, to go." Because <laughs> I was I had started to hyperventilate and I just could no longer oh breathe right through that movie. And when the mom. Is oh, on the, is bed, and they, and they, the bed and they stumble through the bed. <laughs> and the buh, 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 buh. I don't know who I am, but I'm sure I have a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's not very nice. She says some really mean things about my wife's hair. Is that a wig? That's terrible. I, I, every line of that movie, but the one that house sitter. When, oh yeah! Oh my God! With with Steve Martin, and when the father's a teacher and he's giving them the lecture about marriage and he can't stop being a teacher, so he writes it on the chalkboard. What do men and women think of marriage today? And she looks at Steve Martin and she goes, "Is he expecting a lecture? I don't know. Is he want a want a paper or something?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! You are the Rem- what is it? You are the Rembrandt of bullshit. Or the Picasso of a bullshit. I think it's the Picasso. The Picasso of a bullshit. Every single movie. Um, All of Me. No, that's Lily Tomlin. Mm-hmm. Different. What's the, what's the fucking other one with her? Um, the War of the Roses. No, that's uh. Oh no, that's Kathleen Turner. Oh, uh, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What's the other one? Oh, Protocol. Oh, I don't know if I know. Where that one. she gets shot and she ends up being a government diplomat and she's walking the the. The guy from Saudi Arabia up the steps and he's got the hat on and she's like, I've got the napkins to match your hat. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love that movie. And Wildcats, Tim and I used to watch, that was when I would go home <clears throat> and tonight go home from here and he still, he lived there for like 10 more years. We would get together and we would watch Wildcats together and we would watch um, uh, What's Up Doc. That we would have one night together where we would like get a little drunk, get a little boozy, and watch both movies and just laugh our asses off to you, G-L-Y, you ain't got no alibi, you ugly, what, what, you ugly. <laughs> Dark times. <laughs> wild, wild cats are so goddamn funny. I've got to And watch Woody Harrelson is naked. He and... Uh, well, that's and, a bonus for me. Let and me Wesley Snipes are both naked in that movie. Yeah. Oh, that movie is so... Susie Kurtz is funny. Everything about Wildcats is funny. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in. A, I'm sold. You're, I know you're no, crying but there over is, it already. There is nothing, be- nothing, nothing, nothing better than um, Overboard, though. Oh, no. They're just not. A falsetto child. <laughs> <laughs> I have a falsetto child. <laughs> Come on. Guess this one's name. <laughs> Roy. Roy. <laughs> <laughs> Travis. Sweet Trav. Sweet Trav. <laughs> <laughs> oh, twin. <laughs> I speak French. Do I know what I'm saying? I do know what I'm saying. <laughs> that, that, I almost shit my pants watching that movie. That is a great it's fun movie. And if it comes on cable, I will call. I will Stop call and lie to you. Yes. I will lie to you. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm sick. I just developed a cold. Right. Because I, I have to watch it from beginning to end, and I can't. No. I, I know every single can't line not. of dialogue, and I have to do it. Cat, you got something else you want to throw at us? No, I got nothing right now. You got nothing? I got I got to read some more articles. I got a whole other segment later. No, there's oh, well, <laughs> there's that. Or maybe not. We'll see. <laughs> well, all right, let's toss it over to Al Perkins and see what he's going to throw at us right here in entertainment. Oh Jesus Christ! There's no warning. <laughs> there never is. So in entertainment, um, the Walking Dead companion show still doesn't have a name, but it has a cast, and it already got renewed for two seasons. It hasn't oh. aired one. Uh- so soon it will be year-round Walking Dead. Yes. Um, I have more to say about the last five years. Bates Motel came back yesterday. 
uh, the creator of The Simpson Dies. I'm mad at HBO and uh, the blurred lines aren't so blurry anymore. They lost. Yeah. So exciting news. Hannibal comes back June 4th for its third season on NBC, which I think is on Thursday nights again. So this is NBC's uh, ticket to um, summer TV. Oh, good. Where Under the Dome and all those shows live where they're doing their little. And now all these shows are like 13, 15 episodes. The, the 24 episode seasons are kind of dying, but Hannibal's back. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Brian Fuller that did it, and he did, uh, oh, I never remember the name of that goddamn show about the guy that made pies, and he could bring things back to life. Oh, Pushing touched, Up Daisies. Pushing Daisies. Pushing Daisies. Pushing Daisies. So Brian, no up. Brian Fuller uh, <laughs> has said that he has seven seasons mapped out, and that if they get to do it, then seven, the season seven will be the Silence of the Lambs. But this year, wow, they're gonna do red. They're gonna actually get to Red Dragon because it's been based. Mm-hmm. This whole first two seasons has been based on like one page out of the book uh, Red Dragon. But now in season three, Will finally meets the Red Dragon. So you okay. find, we're finally gonna have that character. Um, Gillian Anderson, even though she's on 19 TV shows, has committed she's the she's going to be one of the main characters this season in all of her beauty. I, I just what she just can do no wrong. She's just entered the pantheon of people that just can absolutely do no. She just there's no dark times coming up. Oh, Who, by the way, who's listening <coughs> in China? I just refreshed the uh, the page of live listeners. We have obviously several from the United States. <coughs> Canada, China, Brazil, all in the room. So hi, I China. I don't recall, and I I, I don't remember Brazil. I, I know I know we've we've spoken to him before, but I can't remember. Well, his no, name. And, and India should be on there because Anand's no. been on one once before. Luis uh, from São Paulo, Brazil, did listen right, right, to right, us. Right, 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 yeah. But I don't know if it's the same one. And then, um, but he he wised up. He left. <laughs> Oh, well. He realized so, what the I'm show was hopeful. about. And I was like, mm, I ain't yeah. got time that so much. I'm still hopeful. I keep his little name right here. Yeah, I do. I would, <laughs> I would, I would too. So very excited for this year uh, as Hannibal. And then my my uh, Michael Pitt, who you might remember from how the, the sexy dark times that I like to enjoy with him, uh, from Hedwig the Movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was on the first season of, I can't remember, but Dirty Hot. So Mike, I love Michael Pitt. Anyways, he is not going to be back as um, Vernon Merger. Those are all the right noises, but it's not the right name. Um, they've recast him <laughs> as the as the one villain from the um, from the Hannibal books. Mm-hmm. But if you're not watching, it is the most beautiful, disturbing TV show. If you ever watched Pushing Daisies, and I can't remember what Brian Fuller's other show was, um, but he just makes the most beautiful horror stories. So that like every time they have a, a kill scene or a, a, the death tableau, it's you want to save it as art, even though it's like. 3,000 knives in one person's body or wow. a human totem pole or he the one time the killer took all these people of different hues and made a color wheel. He killed all these people and he sewed them the bodies together to make a color wheel of people from light to dark and it was... Oh. I mean, this show is so disturbingly fancy. gorgeous. Yeah. And if you have Amazon Prime, season two is now free on Amazon Prime. So oh, good. you have till June 5th to get caught up and... Uh, it's really disturbing and good. And if you saw the season finale last year, who's alive? It's all you know. Everyone, everyone basically died at the end of last season. So everyone it's was a whole new cast this year. Yeah, the only one person that didn't Goodness. get like murdered so, was Jillian Anderson because she was not in the scene where literally every major character was stabbed, shot, or thrown out a window. So I mean, it, after. Wow. An emergency precedent setting surgery. Oh, that's from Soap Dish. <laughs> After a precedent setting, the brain surgery ever see Soap Dish? No. That's the other movie Don't that know. I was asked yeah. to, like, please vacate the premises. <laughs> at, the, at the end where they go live and they do the sun also sets live. Uh-huh. Right. And they do a brain surgery on the bar with a hacksaw and a thing of ether. The brain oh transplant to save Sally Field's life. Just fucking hysterical. And I still can't make it through that. The scene starts, and they're all reading off teleprompters, and Kevin Klein won't wear his glasses. And the the disease that she has is some long German name, and he's already reading things wrong. Like, he can't read brain fluid. He's calling it brake fluid, bran flakes. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's, like, reading his lines for him because he can't see them without his glasses. And then they get to this German, this long German word for the name of the disease, and all of them are like, what? 
so funny. I'm doing it no justice, but you'll pee your pants. All right, deal. Bates Motel came back yesterday, and we're finally getting into how Norman is going to eventually kill his mother. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Psycho, mom's dead. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> sad Night members, dark, yeah. Dark, dark season time. two of Bates Motel ended last week with a really sickening kiss between mother and son, and I guess <laughs> season three, they, they now share a bed they have their own dark times together so we're like really getting yeah we're really getting into the twisted side of uh of uh the bates family history sure it, it really it's one of those shows that keeps it totters right on the edge of like too campy and i can't take this like ooh, that's good and vera farmega is just amazing as norma bates mm-hmm. and so twisted that she named her son norman like that was such a nice little like not in the original movie like that you know because they're kind of making stuff up but the fact that her name was Norma and she named her son after her and their their sick closeness. Mm-hmm. Um, the mm-hmm. Walking Dead spinoff set in L.A. It's going to start like right after what what they, they on the show they always say shit went down or when it all started. Like no one right. talks about, no one gives a name to what it is happened, but oh, they sure. always refer to it in that weird way of like, well, how long you been out here? Well, since right after the shit went down or right after. Right. Yeah, so AMC is doing two seasons. It's usually it started, I think. And I think I think her name is Carrie Coon. She was the she played the sister on um on, in Gone Girl and she was in the leftovers. She's one of the main characters. It's got the cast they don't have a name for it yet, but it's all set up. It started filming. It's gonna start right before it'll do they'll do a, a six season entry like they did with the first season of Walking Dead, where it's only mm-hmm. six episodes. They'll do their six season six episode season then the walking dead will come on and do their half a season and then i think the second season will be um the 13 so the 13 weeks that you don't have the walking dead you'll have this companion piece and this is just to show what's going on in another part of the country okay so it's like same song (coughs) same different people same disease but different people different part of the country instead of being in rural georgia they'll actually be in a big city because the one thing that's never happened in The Walking Dead is they've never they still have never hit a big city. They've stayed in rural Georgia and the closest they've come is now they've been to they're in Alexandria. Well, they went to Atlanta once. Right, 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 but in you the didn't first you didn't find out what happened to anybody in Atlanta. You know what oh, I mean? Okay. They sure. just went, Atlanta was overrun and empty. This is going to be like how like what happened in LA. Oh, like how shit went right, down. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had, right, you're right. So they they were to a big city, but they just went to a they just stole some stuff and then had to get out because Atlanta was already gone. Right. And they, it was uninhabitable, plus it's a lot of money and AMC's cheap. Sure. So everything's on the down low and uh, th- like this one of the towns that they they kept going to to steal stuff is now the entire town is for sale. I guess it's like it's one block and it has like five stores and a couple homes. And you can go on, I think it's for $600,000, you can buy this entire town in Georgia because it was... Let's it, do it. Yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> um, oh my God. Soap dish. Soap dish. Soap dish. I'm on. I'm going to check and see if it's on Amazon Prime. Oh my God. Aaron from LA, The Fall. We've been talking about that. I loved that show. Um, absolutely loved that show. That's what. That's where I came up with the "she can do no wrong." Um, and and Jamie Dornan is that's he's the serial killer. Oh my god, we're obsessed with that at work. That's all we talk about is the fall, and it's six episodes. You're in and out, and I love a serial killer. Um, <laughs> right, for the love of God, Dexter's my favorite show. Creator of The Simpson dies. Um, he did. He was one of the creators with Matt Goring. Is that how you say his last name? Groaning. Groaning. Mm-hmm. Um, and the third guy whose name I don't know. They created it. He was a writer for Cheers. He was a writer for Taxi. He wrote for the Tracy Ullman show. He helped create The Simpsons. He stayed for four years. I guess there was a lot of inner turmoil and strife between the three creators, main writers. He left in like 93, but he stayed on in like perpetuity. Is that the word? That he stayed an executive producer and got all rights to sign the deal, even though TV shows were not available on video yet. That we were still like eight years away from that even being a thing. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. He got video right, VHS rights, and DVD rights, even though DVD wasn't really even a thing yet. Forever, isn't that something similar to what the Disney does with their contracts? It's like, and any foreseeable future <coughs> right way he, of he, distribution, yeah, any way you could possibly <clears throat> distribute this, we're going to own that too. Right. Even if you haven't thought of it yet, we're still going to pee on it. Right. So he got this deal, and he's he's he said he made like millions a year, even though he had not laid hands on that show in 22 years Mm -hmm. he died on sunday night and um left a fortune to charity he was he and he said he made so much money on that show 
that he could go broke. He could give all his money away in March and be rich again in July when the next round of no, money residuals, came, come in. residuals yeah. came in. But he left all his money to charity, and everyone was just saying that he was the re- – like, Matt Groening was the, the, the Simpson family – that he, that Homer and Marge were his parents' names, mm-hmm. and the family was kind of based on his family. But the whole rest of the town, and the whole rest of the tone of the show, going from like uh, mocking the Japanese filmmaker that made Ran to doing a horror story, were all him. Like he was the one that kept pushing the envelope and being like, "It's a cartoon. These kids can do. These people can do whatever they want to. Mm-hmm. Like lo- no limitations. Draw it. We can we can parody anything. We can mock anything." Mm-hmm do it and, th- and that's what they said was the difference was one wanted to write a, like a little family comedy and this th- I can't th- now I can't think of his name so I didn't write it down Alan maybe something or other sure dead anyways don't call him because he won't answer Deal. Um, <clears throat> but he was the one that said you can go much bigger with this like you don't need to make it about a family of five it can be about this crazy town and all the things they go through and the writers all said we were writing for him. Like mm. he was the person that gave us the vision to stay on for twenty. What are they on? Twenty six years yeah. now. The longest Seven. running. Yeah, the longest running show. So, and they gave everyone has given him a lot of credit. And even he said he was very hard to work with, and he was a pain in the ass, and it was best that he left. But so it was just interesting. And so you can look at all the different things that he's left his fortune to, and the fact that he just kept leaving his fortune, even alive, he kept giving his money away. Giving away. And uh, he has, he was married to Jennifer Tilly from Bullets Over Broadway uh, briefly, and they stayed friends. But there's like no one, as far as anyone can tell, there's no benef- no beneficiaries to him or no one to bequeath anything to. So there's no one to really fight on this. Um, now, this Jinx on HBO, it just has not worked out because there's too much on Sunday nights. But Jinx is this thing, and I think it has something to do with that serial um, radio show that was on that everyone the podcast that everyone was listening to the I, show with Clayton McKee no nah, this one <laughs> no 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 the, about, about the guy that whose wife whose wife was murdered and his best friend disappeared or his best friend was murdered and his wife disappeared well anyways this I think it's the same thing as this serial that everyone was listening to well now it's been this like six or six week special on um, HBO mm-hmm. but it's not on HBO on demand and I just can't t- there's just too much on on Sunday nights there's too much going on on Sunday night. Ain't nobody got time for that. And I do not have time. But I'm like, I'd be happy to watch it when I have a free moment. Like, I can't take one more thing on Sunday night. And I can't find the it's other a, time to sign. It's on it's HBO on, Go. But it's, it's Oh, it's on HBO Go. But it's not on HBO On Demand because I want to watch it on my hashtag, TV. Hashtag white women problems. Carry yeah, on. it is definitely a white woman problem. <laughs> we are definitely not in the dark times on this one. I can watch but it on sh- my iPad, but I it's can't so watch it on my giant television. And now they're saying they're going to reopen the one case because of this documentary. And whoever this filmmaker is that's making this show, this Jinx show, he's obsessed with this guy. And is just convinced this guy is a killer. And the best part about this whole special series is that Jinx, the, his name isn't Jinx, but that's what they're calling him. He's interviewed through the whole thing. He sat down for all the interviews with someone who thinks he murdered these two people. And he's being interviewed and giving his side of the story. So it's 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 compelling. I watched one episode huh. on, 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 on Go, but, you know, I only watch HBO Go, you know, because I don't have a TV in my bedroom. So I just bring the iPod on there. Mm-hmm. Or iPad. What's this thing called? Pad. I, sure. My iDevice. I did that for like the very so first I'm time s- last night. I totally like <clears throat> snuck into bed after Sharon was asleep and was watching TV. So I don't really, I don't really want to watch a whole TV series on a 10-inch screen. I'm not poor. You know what I mean? Like Sometimes it's just inconvenient to get out of bed and go to the couch. Like I find myself... <laughs> but I'm kind of <laughs> relishing the fact that I can stand up. So I'd like to... I've actually watched TV on my phone because I won't get out of bed. If you ever watch one of the Batman movies on that phone, I will no, come I, to your house I, and beat you. I won't. You're going to get the Wilson Phillips treatment. No, I was watching like <laughs> Dark Times. Broad City or something. All right, that's fair. No. Broad, City, Broad City's small screen appropriate. That's just funny. Rape, rape, fire. Fire, rape. <laughs> fire, rape. I'm not that far. I just started season two. Oh, they're only on season two. They right. get trapped. They get trapped in the in a boat. They get locked into the food supply room of the boat because they're okay. stoned and they want to go eat. <laughs> but then they get stoned. locked in and they're trying to get help. So she starts yelling rape, and he's like, why are you, and her boyfriend's like, why Why are you yelling rape? And she's right. like, well, I heard that people show up. He's like, no, it's if you re- yell fire, they show up they to show help up, someone right. that's being raped. She's like, fire, fire rape, rape fire. <laughs> and she's just standing at the window. That sh- it's so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that show's killing me. It, it, yeah, I love it. It's, and it's only thirty minutes, it's so only, it's like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to dedicate like a whole hour to a show. Like, scandal can wait, whatever. Oh, Broad <clears throat> City, thirty minutes. 
And I just, I end up just laughing my ass off. And I'm, I'm deeply ashamed at how offensive it is, but I love it. <laughs> so that's Jinx, and I'm mad at HBO On Demand, and I haven't written my strongly worded letter yet, but I will. It looks really interesting. I just, like, I Googled it, and the very first thing that comes up is... Uh, an article that says, did HBO's The Jinx just solve a murder case? Yeah. Like, what? And the fact that this guy, whoever he is, and he's a little bit of a um, of, of a narcissist. Takes one to know it. Um, <laughs> what? What? I took that quiz once, too, and I scored very high. Uh, yeah, I did, too. Just loves the sound of your own voice. <laughs> what? So, so much, anyways. So much so it's amplified wow. through headphones. I know, exactly. Is there is there a crow loop here? <laughs> Is it dark? I don't want to say crap. So then the last thing is um, Robin Thicke and Pharrell. And it's been a shitty year for Robin Thicke. Poor Talk Robin. about shitty Canadians. Um, they <laughs> lost their court battle with the Marvin Gaye family, who just had to point out that um, your song kind of sounds like our it's song. Like exactly kinda. like our song. <clears throat> yeah. And right. it wasn't one of those things where it was inadvertent, like, because... Like, Sam Smith has never stood up and said, I love that unbathed Tom Petty man. You know what I mean? Right. And most people are like, Tom who? You know, you know I don't have to live like a refugee. Right. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> free fallen? Are you free, free fallen? Free, free, free. I am. If, when I look at his dirty fucking hair, it's dark times. Wash your goddamn hair and take that hat off. But he seems lovely. Right, sure. Um, so anyways, so, so you could see where, like, Maybe you haven't heard of that, but when Pharrell and Robin Thicke are listing Marvin Gaye as one of their main influences, and then right. they write the song that's clearly aping, and it's not "Let's Get It On," but I can't think of the name of the song. That um, I heard it three or four times today. The name of that the song. name of that song. Um, it's it's not "Let's Get It On." No, <clears throat> but because uh, I think "Let's Get It On." Yeah, that is Marvin Gaye. "Let's Get It On." That song. Oh, that's a Let's song to fuck. If you want to have dark times with somebody, you just wow, put on baby. "Let's Get It On." You no. you, you might do it. Bl- might- blurred lines, right? Yeah, but what's we know the that Marvin, Marvin Gaye Gay song. song. Oh, uh, no, duh. I'm like, wait, what? Got to give it up. Got to give it Gotta up. Got to give it up. Got to give it up. I'm just splurting out whatever Google tells me to. Okay, can I put on a condom before you start splurting things out at me? So that's the thing. So they no. lost the court battle today, and it was like over seven million dollars that the family of Marvin Gaye gets mm-hmm. for this. And I just feel like anytime you can give Marvin Gaye's family seven million dollars for all the joy and sex he's brought to the rest of the world. You gotta give it up. You know yeah. what I mean? You just well, gotta it's do it. certainly not like Pharrell and uh, they're hurting for cash anyway. Fork it over, but yeah. sexual healing sped um, up my puberty by about oh. five months. <laughs> for real. What should have taken a long period of time happened in a three minute song. <laughs> <laughs> get, up, get up, get up, get up, get up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was done. Like, I was just staring at the radio, like, I don't know what he's selling, but I'm in and I want it to be of a nice dark berry. One of the things that I heard on, uh, <laughs> got that. Sorry. Um, one of the things that they were saying on the national news on the radio I listened to earlier, he he was kind of making a commentary about the whole thing that they he suspected that they did this and didn't think that the Marvin Gaye family would have the the backing to step up to this and make it a deal. And they it's were proven called, wrong. It's called an attorney and the <laughs> oh, law. Oh, right, right, yeah. And that, that really is what it... They that, thought they could get away with it. They thought they could get away with it. And it just, ugh, ugh. Um, so now, well, he, I wonder from now from now on, like they did re- with uh, <coughs> Sam Smith's song, where all of a sudden, you know, Tom Petty gets uh, writing uh, credit for it. Is are they going to rebrand this? Not rebrand the song, but are they going to give <laughs> writing title or something? They will, and any any um, any uh. awards given out will uh, will like go backwards and have to be awarded if if it was given. <laughs> if, it wanted- like if it had won like best song like best song which because of the Prince controversy from many years ago over the um, Nothing Compares to You that it got song of the year where it was nominated for song of the year when it was a song that was really written like six years prior okay. that it really isn't a song of this year so if it had won something like that they would have to take away any awards given to it that would like it was an original composition from this year when you're really stealing from an older song oh because <coughs> okay. the Grammys wants to be very up, very up and up about all that stuff, but I don't think it actually, except for money, I don't think it won anything. Oh, okay, <laughs> because most people, honestly, probably were like, "Yeah, that's a Marvin Gaye song." Oh, totally. Sure. Was. And unless you listen, and, and the the song that Sam Smith he claims inadvertently stole from was mm-hmm. not a very popular song. And it right. wasn't until like you heard that on a you know at your dentist's office or on an elevator that you were like, God, that sounds familiar. You're like, oh yeah, I I've know heard that this song. Before. Yeah. yeah, right. And that's why they agreed amicably to be like, well, 
That's how I feel about Tom Petty, like, existing in general. Like, until somebody says it, I'm like, oh, yeah. And he is alive. He was well, a I, thing. And if you, too, had better lawyers, Coldplay would give every dollar they made up to a certain point to them. Because every time I heard a Coldplay song, I'm like, this is just a cheap knockoff of you, too. Like, this is, like, the poor man's mildly fucktard version of... Watch this. Two weeks from now, you, too, Sue's Coldplay. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah. And, I mean, there is <clears throat> there is just no getting around Marvin Gaye's... Sex, that's sexual healing. I cannot stress that enough. Like, <laughs> I just remember staring longingly at my radio, being like, "What? Who? Let's get it on." Sexual healing. Yeah, I, I, I was not. And Barry, I mean, I was a little kid listening to my sister's clock radio when Barry White sang, "Not never gonna give you up." But there was some, there was some song that Barry White sang Barry White. that I was just. I just remember laying there as like an eight-year-old, being like, "I don't know what this means, but I hope to one day find out." I can s- almost hear it in my head. I just can't think of what it is. <coughs> I'll, go- I'll Google it. You're the first, Reason. the last, the blah, blah, blah. Oh, my fir- yeah, my first, my last, my everything. There oh, I, I was my like, first, my I'll, last, I'll my get in line. everything. Whatever he's selling, whatever this, this deep voice fucker selling. We'll come back yeah. and try to describe more songs that we don't know the names to <laughs> in hour three. <laughs> Stick with us. Join us in the chat room. Thank you all for listening from around the world. It's Q Talk. You've been listening to the show on Q Talk America. This is Q Talk America. The following broadcast contains adult humor, language, and topics, along with partial nudity. Actual knowledge is used sparingly. The show is a result of a lost bet and a bad game of rock, paper, scissors. It's the show with Clayton McKee. And now, a man with a face for radio, Clayton McKee. Oh my gosh. Hello again, everybody. It is the top of hour three for us here in uh, the heart of Central Phoenix. I am Clayton McKee sitting alongside right now, Kat Carlson. Dot, Al, dot, dot. Al had to uh, step out and <clears throat> hopefully not die from coughing. Don't that's what, die! Don't die, Al! I think he'll be, he'll, he'll figure it out somehow. <laughs> hopefully he'll be back with us for the rest of the show. <laughs> We are again coming to you live from Studio C in the heart of Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you very much for listening. For wherever you are, my God, there's so many people in the chat room. There's like 13 in there. Chatting up a fucking storm over there. Singapore, India, Brazil, China, Canada. Of course, all of you from the United States, all listening to the audio-only stream. Thank you all for being there. Uh, He hasn't popped up in the chat room yet that I've seen, but I think Tomo from New Zealand is listening somewhere. Tomo, hi. Hello, everybody. Are you, are you alive? You're going to be okay, Al? going to make it? Yes. And the song that I was thinking of was uh, Can't Get Enough of Your Love, Baby. As many times I've given love and made, made love. love. Oh, oh, my God. I just remember laying there listening yeah. to my sister's clock radio being like, I don't know what he's talking about, but when I find out, I'm doing it with him first. In that shrill, shrill like, voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Barry White was a big boy. He was a full size. And for those listening at home, just imagine what my voice sounded like before it changed. <laughs> I do. You think yeah, he sounds like a girl now? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who that man in the radio is, but I gotta have him. God, all of a sudden he's Minnie Mouse. What the hell is that? <laughs> it's as high as I could go. That's all I got. Like when Karen does helium on Will and Grace and it, has no, it doesn't affect her voice at all, that was me. <laughs> Yo, that's kind of true. I like that. A falsetto child. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, did you, like we got a spit out of Cat Carlson is just spit beer. What did you get it on? Everything? That was worth everything. <laughs> <laughs> beer nose, nose beer. Have you wow. met? Wow. <laughs> God, Cat's eyes are red now. Woo! <laughs> My God, Cat. <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen her laugh like that. Oh my god, oh, she's crying. That See? falsetto bit gets me every time. Uh, <laughs> you're, just, you're just never a falsetto child. <laughs> all these years, uh, all these years later, every time overboard's still funny. Oh, oh. come on, oh, honey, try, <laughs> Roy. <laughs> oh my god. Molly used to go on and on and on with quotes from that movie, too. And just, oh, I was oh. a short, fat <laughs> slut. <laughs> Did I just walk downhill? See, honey, it's all coming back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something about myself, something that isn't horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh. oh, one night we're going to have to stay after and we're going to have to just watch Overboard oh, in its entirety. I have uh, not seen that in a long, long time. <laughs> a long time. Well played. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, well done. Are you done with your entertainment section, Al? I can't, I can't get enough of your love. Oh the, oh, the dark times of Barry White. Oh, I don't know what she... I like it when she goes... <laughs> oh, not the water barrel again. <laughs> oh, we should have a where are they now and put that cast back together. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Well, Those they're kids. still married. I mean, they're still they're oh, no. still not not, not married. married. Yeah. Right. No, but I'm like all the kids that played in the movie. Oh, yeah. Where are all them today? <laughs> oh, have you regained composure, Kat? I mean, did I ever have it to begin with? Yeah, I'm exactly. not sure. Allegedly, you did. And, and we'll see how this turns out. I don't know. <laughs> Play the shit show. <clears throat> this week with Katie's intro music. I don't know. Sports and other stuff. I've got absolutely no sports, but I want to make it very clear that I pretend to be Dr. Ben Carlson with an L, not Dr. Ben Carson with no L. Yeah. Mormons finally get it in Utah. Ooh, good for them. Lesbians <laughs> rejoice you can almost reproduce. And gay nerds get a new gay character in Star Wars. Very exciting things have happened. That's all I got. All right. So it's been cracking me up every time I look at any news source. Because Dr. Ben Carson allegedly thinks oh. he's going to run <laughs> for president. In prison. <laughs> Chief of fructards right there. He's, oh. he's making you feel good about sucking dick for a cigarette. For real. <laughs> Wow. Okay. It was one time I was 17. Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't even smoke anymore. It was dark times. <laughs> yeah, I almost spit whatever I was drinking the first time that I saw the headline, too, about how Dr. Ben Carson is not okay with gays. Presidential hopeful Ben Carson apologized Wednesday night for saying being gay is a choice, followed, following a backlash over his assertion that prisons are evidence that homosexuality <clears throat> is an option. Yeah. What happened? Uh, in a recent interview on CNN, I realized that my choice of language does not reflect fully my heart on gay issues. Uh, His heart on gay issues? Heart on. Oh, right. Oh. Oops, thank you. Oh, Dr. Ben Carson is a retired neurosurgeon and a Republican. No. He's weird. I know. Weird. They had to have one black guy. They had to <laughs> one dark time. Right. They had to have dark time. They had to have gay time. Yeah, had, just the one. They had to have woman time. <clears throat> and then they're all sold up. Um, Carson has launched a 2016 presidential exploratory committee earlier this week. He has a faithful following among conservatives and is doing better in some public opinion polls than some better known Republicans seeking the White House. So th what I really hope happens is that he actually gets kind of far <clears throat> in the process because then I will just laugh incessantly and start introducing myself as Dr. Ben Carlson. I will just start impersonating a Dr. Ben Carlson. Not this guy, because he's black. That'd be weird. The stretch for right. you. A white woman impersonating a black man. That's yeah. kind of offensive in a lot of ways. I'm, I'm not sure. saying it's not possible. I mean, I know some people that are good with makeup. Let me see what yeah. I can do. Goodness gracious. And the best part about this is Dan Savage is back. And Dan Savage is the one who, well, close to a decade ago, probably 2004, went after, oh my God, Santorum. Okay. Because Santorum said all those, well, he continually says horrible things Continues about gays. to say yes. horrible things. But his first round at, I think he was trying to primary um, Bush at the time, said the things about, about gays and they were really offensive. So Dan Savage realized early in Google, like, just how bad you could get it. So if you Google Santorum, mm -hmm. it's the filthy mix of semen and fecal matter that is the byproduct of gay sex. Yeah, and he made sure that if you Googled Santorum, that's what came up. Like he pushed that. Yeah, <laughs> he got that going so hard. So now, um, Dan Savage and Savage Love is that his is that his uh, I don't know. blog? Really, really funny guy. Very often on uh, Bill Maher. So he's so his thing. So he's gone after uh, Dr. Ben pretty hard, and he's like, "Then you need to suck my dick." Like, right now, right. if it's a choice, then you need to choose to suck my dick. Well, because what he actually said, he was <clears throat> he was asked by Chris Cuomo if he believes that gay was a choice, and Carson replied, absolutely, because a lot of people who go into prison go into prison straight. And when they come out, gay. So did something happen while they were in there? Ask yourself that question. Yeah. That's his scientific 
proof for why why being gay is a choice because some people that being held captive right. might change your mind on something of this like yeah. getting laid once in a while you might like being denied go to the dark side during a freedom and sunlight a white power meeting praise thank, allegiance thank to you. the flag no matter <laughs> any flag they offer yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it was a just so funny child? <laughs> <laughs> My invitation wasn't that far off. <laughs> yes, please. Child. <laughs> <laughs> Best part is this man is a scientist. Scientist. <laughs> See, we all know that the American Psychological Association and other medical groups have concluded that homosexuality is not a matter of choice and is not a disease. This man, Dr. Ben Carson, gained notoriety as a surgeon from his work separating conjoined twins. And like he went to he's educated. He mm-hmm. went to school. He is of the medical profession. Mm-hmm. Who has decided that, not decided, but but found truly that... A neurosurgeon. Right. He's yeah. a neurosurgeon. Yeah. He's a choice because of prison. Yeah. yeah. I kind of want to vote for so him. So does that, if you use his so, theory... Even though you go I've in gay, science, I'm going to go with the least scientific thing of all. Right. Yeah. Using his theory, you go in gay, you come out straight? Is it, 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 you, you, you flip whatever you want? Oh. Oh, yeah. It's a conversion. Got yeah. it. That's fun. No, I'm just saying... I think somebody's watching Orange is the New Black too much. Yeah, he might That be. might be. Like, if I go into prison, there's he a chance black. year three I'm going to enjoy toilet wine. Yeah. So I'm going to fight it for the first couple years, but then eventually it's going to be like, well, it smells a little bit like ketchup. Let's try it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> toilet wine. Oh, okay. I stopped listening like halfway through and came back at like, oh, it smells a little <laughs> bit like ketchup. I was like, what? <laughs> Your ass. How's that? How's that for dark times? Oh. I mean, sometimes. He's a doctard. <laughs> He's a doctard. There you go. Well played, Jenny. Well done, Jenny. Yeah, you know what? And like they all do, he said the dumb thing, and then they were like, oh, well, dumbass, why are you talking like that? And he says, I answered a question without really thinking about it thoroughly. Yeah, because I'm a doctor. That's what you do. I deeply regret my statement, and I promise you, on this journey, I may err again, but unlike politicians, when I make an error, I will take full responsibility and never hide or parse words. So I want his campaign to say, Dr. Ben Carson, I promise to fuck up big. <laughs> I promise you a shit show the likes of which you've never seen before I land on a topic. I feel like we should write him a letter and tell him that. Be mm. like, your new slogan <clears throat> needs to be Dr. Ben Carlson for president. We're going to fuck shit up. Yeah, we're, oh, big. <laughs> we're going to land on so many wrong answers before we get one right. Yeah. I, I love his. I love his Facebook rebuttal. It says, in a recent interview on CNN, I realized that my choice of language does not reflect fully my heart on gay issues. I do not pretend to know how every individual came to their sexual orientation. I regret that my words to express that concept were hurtful and divisive. For that, I apologize unreservedly to all that were offended. I'm a doctor trained in multiple fields of medicine who was blessed to work at perhaps the finest institution of medical knowledge in the world and still talked like an asshat. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Parenthetically. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing here. Parenthetical responses provided by Dr. Ben Carlson. <laughs> Some of our brightest minds have <clears throat> looked at this debate and up until this point have been there have been no definitive studies that people are born into a specific sexuality. We do know, however, that there were always born male and female. And I know that we are all made in God's image. There it is. And as RuPaul says, born naked and everyone does and drag after that. What does he say? Everybody's born naked and everything else is drag. Yeah, it's everything fantastic. after that is drag. He was on The View yesterday. Yeah, he continues to say he supports human rights and constitutional Mm. protections for gay people and have done so for many years support civil unions and have done so for many years support the right of so he'll never get the republican nomination he just apologized for bashing gays right like santorum's gonna be halfway up his ass making a fecal mixture of semen and raisins he goes on to say that marriage is a religious institution and again to reiterate that he's not a politician and again that's marriage, gonna be his shtick. I'm not a politician. Not a religious institution. No, it's a property. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a civil. That. It's a civil institution, sweetheart. Can't can't. I made. I knew you promised to fuck up big, but not in the same sentence. I was hoping you'd wait. No. So, well, I mean, it is three paragraphs down. All right. So. so okay, he meant later in this this briefing. Yeah. He's a, he's an asshat though. This guy. But he believes it's his obligation to learn from his mistakes and to treat all people with, with respect and dignity. So he'll never get the Republican He's nomination. He's never going to be president. Yeah, oh no, not, not around the Republican ticket. That phrase just don't fly. 
Either way, rest assured that the show with Clayton McKee will be closely following Dr. Ben's presidential good to know. bid. Yeah. And whether or not he sucks um, Dan Savage's dick. Because I feel that's news. I feel like that would be news. I feel like that would be a good thing. I don't I don't think I want to watch a videotape, but maybe. I don't know. Catch me, you know. How I mean, ask me right about here. How can you know that it really happened if you don't show see me, the tape? Show me in the bottle where you want to watch those two have sex. <laughs> <laughs> we already talked about if you can't see it and or touch it or, like, it's not real unless you experience it, right? So you're going to have to watch the tape. That's yeah. my opinion. Yeah. There it is. So we're going to move on from Dr. Ben Carson. I have a hard time not saying my new last name. Car- yeah. Carlson or Carlston. Carlston, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I need to change that in the chat room. I'm now Dr. Ben Carlston. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll alert the media. <laughs> My new husband already did. She's taken. She's taken a wife. <laughs> All right. To you're happier st- gay news. Which one? It's amazing. Duh. By like, I mean by like. I mean by a lot. Have yeah. you met me? I met him. Um, well, there's that too. That helps. Low bar. <laughs> <laughs> In happier gay news, the Utah State Senate passed an LGBT Uh anti-discrimination bill on Friday and has received widespread support from both gay and transgender rights groups, as well as officials from the state's populist religious community. Wow. I know. In a, in a, well, the Mormons are busy mopping up that mess. Who knew? No, the Mormons are all, all in favor of it. The Mormons are loving it. (coughs) Because, as it turns out, the Mormons realized that, oh, they've been a persecuted peoples, too, and maybe it's all kind of the same. That's what I mean. They're mm. busy mopping up the mess of Prop 8. When, once they realize that that whole, like, yeah. oh, our, our donor names have been published and everyone knows that we persecuted people. Right. Oh, yeah. They're they're now, the Coke, have you noticed Coke Brother commercials? I swear to God, these people are listening to the show. Mm-hmm. Coke Brothers now has commercials how they're like, we help people. Yeah. How? You know, it's a very vague commercial as to what Coke, the Coke company does not Coke K O C E but or C O K E but <laughs> the Coke the the, the evil empire yeah right I know what you're talking about that now they have commercials on like CNN about like I have not seen these commercials because CNN is where the independent voters kind of dwell if you're a hardcore liberal you're watching MSNBC if you're you know right wing you're watching Fox mm-hmm. and so like all these people like they tr- they do pro fracking commercials on CNN now yes they that's do. where everybody's buying time. Well, now the Koch brothers have a commercial on there about their very vague industry, but the, oh, they're big with people and they love everyone and they're helpers. Up with little, you know how the Walmart commercial is never about anything Walmart is selling. It's the it's the dark type person, right. yeah, saying he's not being trampled on and killed by the man and doesn't use food stamps. Like I became a manager <clears throat> thanks to Walmart. Yeah, oh my <laughs> God, I, I went to a public school. I mean, it, that almost sounded racist, and I did not mean it like that. <laughs> um, dark times. It was one of the. Yeah, I was not going to a dark time. There. Oh, dark times. So it um, <laughs> it really is funny that these new these new commercials now address these very specific problems of PR, and now the Mormon Church yeah. is like. Oh shit! We come off as like intolerant and awful because mm-hmm. everyone knows that we were intolerant and awful to everybody. Mm-hmm. Right? We just change our minds every thirty years on a new group of people that were, you know, it used to be black people. It, that well, it was women, and then it was black people, <coughs> and, 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 and Native it Americans, gays, and, then and it was, was gays. Right. So every time that it comes up again, that you're you're just fucking evil, the Mormons are like, oh, we gotta we gotta take that back. The prophet's back. Prophet's back. No. Prophet said we're okay with gays. You know what I mean? I couldn't find it. I needed Marnie for a bell. <laughs> but it's just so funny how concerned no. about P. Like they're better than the Catholic Church. Oh my! Soon as somebody realizes, like they they've, they've been bashing and like raising money and, and growing pineapples to like subjugate a certain people. Mm-hmm. Oh, they just any light you just shine a light on those people and they just they scurry like rats. Mm. This I mean, I would mine. love to my Mormon friends, but right. it is so true that as soon as as soon as it came out, like how anti-gay they were and how like vehemently and evilly anti-gay they were. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! Now they've got a billboard at sudden, every corner. Oh yeah! All of a sudden, they were embracing, <clears throat> and there were pamphlets sent out on how oh. to embrace your LGBT relatives and how to address it. Like the Mormon <clears throat> Church attacked the shit out of this. They were like, "Nope, here we go. Yep, yep, we're done. We're on board. We're in." Somebody found out how intolerant we are about yet another group. Yeah. But it, it's actually, I mean, I read it is kind of a little bit encouraging because in the state of Utah like the Mormon church does run a fair amount of the government and the anti-discrimination bill is uh, was unanimously approved by the uh, Republican controlled <laughs> business and labor committee then it passed the state senate in a 23 to 5 vote it's headed to the to the state house and and is expected to to pass with flying colors and the governor's already behind it like everybody's all about it now there is cuz those people fall in line 
They sure do. When they get their marching orders, oh boy, mm, those right. pineapples yeah. get grown for a whole other cause. Yeah. So, yep. But still don't support, uh, if you go to Hawaii, don't go to the the main pineapple place in, in Oahu. Because that's the one that funded all of the anti-gay stuff. Fuckers. And it's not Dole, but I can't think of who it is. But they have the main luau, and that's when they want you to go to. But all that money was was funneled immediately to anti-gay causes. Yeah. Well, the the fun thing about this, though, is that there is a catch uh, to this legislation, and it is that religious groups are exempt from the... Re- re- uh, hmm, are Try exempt. again. Stand by. <laughs> but there is a catch. Religious groups are exempt from the legislation, as would <clears throat> church-affiliated groups such as the Boy Scouts, which Utah has strong ties to the Church of Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints, also known as the Mormons, and prohibit gay scout leaders from participating. So they're, they're pumping this out to be... Um, you know, a, a public business cannot discriminate, but perhaps a church one still can. So they're kind of riding this fine line, um, and their their spokespeople are, are saying things, um, kind of like I was just saying, uh, America thought that Mormons were sexually deviant because they chose to share their love in a way that was not conventional. And so they're trying to, like, identify now and say, okay, yeah. well, you know what? We got driven out of enti- an entire fucking state because of who we were. Like, okay, we get it. Oh, they got I'm driven out of, like, eight states. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true. They eh? started off in, in uh, upstate in New, New York. York. Yeah. Yeah. Go west, as yeah. the village people said to, I'm guessing, the Mormons. So, well, <laughs> well, several states have passed laws banning LGBT discrimination. Utah's proposed law is unique in that it has enjoyed the support of the Mormon church leaders in this conservative, conservative state. Uh, Governor Gary Herbert says he will sign the bill if it passes through all the all the legislature. No problem. Um, civil rights advocates say that the agreement between the church and the civil rights groups has been a long time coming following seven years of talks and negotiations. He says, I think. Uh, who said that? Mm, I lost who I was talking about. Anyway, the quote says, I think at least it puts LGBT folks on the same level as all other folks, said Mariana Lowe, the legislative council with the ACLU of Utah, adding that the state's protections for religious freedom are already very broad. So, yes, the religious people are covered, and now we're going to say, okay, you can't discriminate based on LGBT. Religious people, you can still do whatever the, whatever the fuck you want. And, and, and I, I always say, like, I'm, I, I'm all for it. Just put in your bakery window, but we don't like gays. Like, just... just oh, my God. Just I make it on like, this soapbox we don't today. use yeah. gluten, we use sugar in our icing, we don't really like gays. And then we can all just make a choice. Yeah. Like And homos keep on walking. <clears throat> yeah, just just... I don't want to accidentally buy your cupcake. Like, no. just let me know that you're what you're for or against. Put it on your sign. Like, you're either open to business for everyone or we, we hate have, you here. Yeah, we we have strong religious beliefs. You might want to like Google us before you come in here and order a cupcake from us. Because that's my, I, I think suing people because they're bigoted is just it's the most asinine thing I've ever heard. It's and pointless. Why do you want their Why do you want their business? And don't right. drive them out of business. There's some other small minded people. Keep them in a Sure, keep them, in a keep them on an island. Who cares? You know, I, I was actually just on the soapbox <clears throat> earlier today because somebody was asking me about local bars in town, and and there's one that's maybe not so shy about not wanting women there. And I said, you know what? It's a fine place. It's a wonderful place. I don't fucking go there. Yeah. If the owner doesn't want my money. I won't give it to him. Done and done. Like, why is it such a hard concept? Like, I'm not out there picketing saying, please let women in this bar. I don't give a fuck. But there are people in the city who have. I know, and, and I don't understand. Wait, what get, bar is this? Really. Oh no! I just missed the beginning of the story. No, I'm. You don't know this. I thought Ch- I thought Chick Fil A. Like I don't know what you're talking about. No, a bar in the city that's not particularly welcoming of women. Oh yes, it, it, uh, yeah. Like, so if I have a female so friend I, in town, like we're just we're we just, don't go there. We're not going there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And luckily, the bar crawls are all supposed to end there. And you never make but, it because you're all wasted. By the yeah, time yeah, you, you jump off. But first, luckily, right. the only people there's no one awake for the end of the tour anyway, so no one gets there. But that's one of those things, like. Uh, just, and the one day we did go through the whole shebang with it, and I, I like, I just looked at the person working the door, and I'm like, right. In 2014, this is the fight you want to pull. Sure. And, and then I'm like, like, then I was like, I was on the other side yeah. of the door. The best part about this place is the taco shop. <laughs> For real, and, yeah. pe- and people roll up there with little kids at 3 a.m. Like, just <sighs> yeah. go around the way. Yes. At yeah. three, I was just talking to somebody with about kids. that too. What are the? What is that all about? Well, there is no time there's limit. There's no bad to, time for good tacos. For good tacos. No, I'm but, but again, <laughs> you see all these people with these children strung out at all. Not yeah. strung out, but I mean they've got the kids out at all hours of the day and or uh, the night. I don't know. It's kind of odd. Maybe it was my new husband talking about. It. I don't know. I was talking to somebody over the weekend Could about be. it. About like the little kids in their little light up sneakers, like running around in front of the taco stand. Uh, funny, they, funny I guess stuff. the audio just went to an old show. Oh, bad yep. news. Stand by. We're going to fix t- it. 
No one is listening to us right now. But they're watching. Um, That's true. Anyway, anyway, and Jenny, I do agree with you. Like they should be shut down. But at the same time, I'm like, it's it's just like uh, no, because that's that's legitimately how capitalism is supposed to work. If you have if you have a good product or a good philosophy, then you should be successful. You know, yeah. people will support Let you. Let the market shut it right. down. Yeah. Exactly. Like if you're a dickhead and the population, it in general decides to spend their money wisely which is the problem it, the uninformed people and the impulsive people and the selfish people are the problem you know yeah. because they're they're still gonna you know remember when we all hated dominoes we still fucking ordered it we just told our friends that we hated dominoes because of why did we hate dominoes because they were anti-gay for a while oh didn't realize oh that. and they're very thing, yeah, pro like, they're very like anti-choice yeah they they still were i still went on them for dominoes but they did stay very anti-choice right oh you know, but there. But are... I never remember. But then I forget. Is it Papa John's or Domino? So I avoid both, and I go to Pizza Hut because Papa John was a real douche about Obamacare. I don't remember. I don't yeah, remember how was. especially one discriminatory of, one of, he is. He one, just one was of a greedy them was, old was, bastard. One of them gave a lot of money to the the anti choice campaigns. Right. But I. But then I, I get all the last. But I did go. I did try right. a, a, a a chick fucker chicken one time. Did you? Just because they're like in it. the neighborhood, it, it was just greasy chicken. Like it I was sure like, is. I get the shit at Wendy's. Deep fried. And get the redheaded girls chicken. It's a, it's the same. It's true. It's, the it's red-headed just she doesn't girls have the chicken. waffle fries. It's though. just chicken and fat. Yeah. Ah! What it's the a, fuck is that? <laughs> actually, they are all over Arizona. I know. They, where's it? Where's it? Where's the machine? No, it's not in here. But they're harmless. Of course, it's in here. Harmless. It's the size of a dog. It is not, it's harmless. <laughs> we have been invaded. And it's gonna go right into the fan. <laughs> We've been invaded. The, the, the right thing to do is open your mouth. Yeah, Al. <laughs> Suck it in. <laughs> Take it all in. God damn uh. it. Mm. All right. Where are we going now? Well, here's where we're going to go now. The next story was really for Marnie, and I kind of want to save it till, till next week, but maybe I'll do it two weeks in a row. Because there's a new sex toy on the market designed to help gay couples conceive a child. It's not a toy, then, is it? That's right. The semenette is an ejaculating dildo that can now help Jesus <laughs> get Christ. pregnant through artificial Semen sold insemination. Separately. <laughs> I'm a falsetto child. You have to whip it up by hand. So yeah, hell, whip, yeah, whip it up. <laughs> Just beat that to a fine lather, kids. <laughs> when you're home beating your dick like an Iraqi prisoner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the semenette can be used solo or with a partner. And, and, and provides pleasure even when you're not looking to get pregnant. Inventor Stephanie Berman created the device after being disheartened by other methods of insemination. The only options other than going to a doctor's office would be a turkey mm. baster or a needleless syringe. And you got to have somebody and good that's with the hands sexy. on the end of the turkey baster. Right. So we started using those types of things and quickly realized it was as awful as it sounds. There's nothing romantic or sexy and fun about trying to impregnate your wife with a turkey baster. <laughs> that's right. I'll, so, I'll drink to that. <laughs> yeah. Berman started to brainstorm and realized the dildo would be the perfect way for both partners to feel involved in the process and keep it intimate. She says, I've seen a lot of couples go through months and months of trying and being unsuccessful. I've seen the emotional toll it can take on people, not to mention the financial burden. The Simonette, which helped Berman and her wife successfully conceive their daughter, currently retails for $139.99. Batteries included? What? what? When is the last time you bought a strap on? I mean, that's on the high end, but well, come I, on now. I, I can also, I can tell you saying, never. What was their price? <laughs> never? 100 and how much? $139.99. forty bucks. That's fair for a good lay. Those things are expensive, man. I don't, I have no reason to know this. I know. <clears throat> I do. But wow. They're expensive. Wow. I know. Well, yeah. you want quality product. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Cream filled, obviously. Now, Whoa. Being a good researcher, I checked out their website. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I didn't buy one. No. I'm, What's it called? The Semenette. Semenette. It sounds like a cookie. It sounds like they sing backup for uh, <laughs> Bette Please Midler. welcome the Semenettes. It's Bet and the Semenettes. Oh, my God. She would love that. One fine day. <laughs> she would love that. You'll get your good. Yeah. Things oh. that I loved about the Semenettes website was... On the, the freak- stickiness. Yes. And also, too. The use of hand towels. I feel like I'm on $25,000 pyramid. <laughs> Things that sell <laughs> in the butt box. Things that the semenette would say. <laughs> Doesn't work in your butt. My favorite. <laughs> I'll bet it does. Oh, there it is. Look at that. My favorite question on the frequently asked questions hmm. page oh. is what liquids can I use in the semenette? No. And I'm my thinking to myself, word. 
what other liquids do you want to use? They, of course, vary. <laughs> I feel like you have an answer. <laughs> well, I'm not sure what other ones you want to use, but the semenette, in a very politically correct way, said, most liquids can be put inside the <clears throat> semenette, although we do not recommend putting any foreign substances into vaginal or anal cavities. Yeah. <laughs> if you wish to use this as a fetish product, you may do so, but we advise against it and will not be held responsible. You may also find that certain liquids will not work as well to mimic ejaculation. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm really sad that Marnie's not here. But for that. first time but I you had... saw that pearlescence hand soap squirt out. <laughs> yes, I'm like, Whoa. you tell me one person that didn't watch that commercial yeah. and go, oh, oh no. Thanks oh, for the no. new soap, mom. Yeah. So the, <laughs> so the people at the tester company have a sense of humor. Grandma's like, oh, we got new mother of pearl soft soap. Oh, I saw it. Saw it. Sure did. Mother of something. <laughs> oh, it is pearls. Yes. <laughs> Makes a nice necklace. It does. This is a waste of a really Ew. good bottle of wine. <laughs> There's a lot of waste happening I mean, the, here the buzz, the, bu- the buzz is real, but the I mean the joy is not there. Cause this I'm is, so sorry. This is wow. one of the best bottles of wine going. And seriously. And, and what are you drinking this evening? <clears throat> oh, oh, Jesus. Le Galopier. Galopier. Sure. <clears throat> Your French is better than that. Galopier. I don't, I don't know how you pronounce this. I will do a Google on it. It's yeah. a Puy Fousse from 2012, and it is, this is the one that I take pictures of all the time, and I, I recommend to people. This is a spectacular bottle of um, a, a white burgundy. It's just one of the absolute best. There you go. But it's one of those things where, I mean, I could have got the same buzz and no taste out of a six ninety nine bottle of sure. Barefoot Contessa shit show. Three buck chuck, right? Three buck yeah. Contessa. <laughs> But I mean, the buzz is lovely, and I won't have a headache for it tomorrow. I just I, I can't taste anything that's going on in this. I'm so sorry. Yeah, in this golden goodness. Sad face the for you. Ye golden goodness. Well, in my final story, to quote Han Solo, here's where the fun begins. The Star Wars universe is getting its first official LGBT character in the franchise's new canon. Re- reports a website called The Big Shiny Robot. The historic introduction will occur in writer Paul S. Kemp's upcoming Star Ass. Wars novel. Paul Ass Kemp. Yes, A-S-S. He's written a new Star Wars novel entitled Lords of the Sith, which is scheduled to be released in in April of this year on the 28th. Of this year? Like in this year, like in a month and... Holy uh, shit, I feel like the world is not prepared enough for us. I feel like we're we're just getting hmm. used to the gay superhero. I don't remember who it was. Uh, Catwoman. Don't care. Is Catwoman a homo now? Cat Catwoman's eating pussy. All right, I knew it was a lesbian. On on the on the DL though, she's bisexual, uh, which we all believe in. Mm, just I mean, like I'm into it. And spoiler alert: he's gonna die soon. But I'm enjoying Jesus's peanut butter eggs right now. <laughs> spoiler <laughs> alert: he doesn't make it through the next story. No. <laughs> Sad. Just face. in breaking news. Yep, they've described the new character Moff Moores. As an imperial who has made some very serious mistakes, but has an incredibly is is an incredibly capable leader and spends much of the book working hard to prevent absolute failure. She also happens to be a lesbian. No. So our first Star Wars character is going to be a lady, yep. gay character. All right. Yep. All right. That was my that was my disappointment. That, that's me, the bad cake maker. Mine too. I was kind of disappointed too. Because I because I, 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 I knew the su- I knew the superhero was a lesbian too, and I was like. Bisexual. They went full on cop out with, uh, and it's not, but it's not Kal- Selena. Kalina. What's Catwoman's sure. real name? Kyle. No idea. I think it's Selena Kyle or something. I'm not that. even that nerdy. <clears throat> but they, they, she lost, she lost her powers or retired the suit, and some bisexual woman came in and stole it, and now she's Catwoman. So they didn't. I think it's Selena Kyle is Catwoman. They didn't make the original Catwoman by it's like the new person in the suits a little. Oh. Having like a college experiment with a you know toilet wine, I don't <laughs> like know. you do. It was weird. Selena Kyle. Selena Kyle. Yeah. Additionally, <laughs> extra value is what you get when you Google semenette. That yeah, I I, I can imagine pop rocks extra in the semenette. <laughs> wow. Ew, who's putting pop rocks in the um, semenettes? Uh, Jenny, I have to God. agree with you that the Coppola, um, the the Coppola. Their wines are actually very good. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, like most California, it's hard to find a good California uh, white. I think California does better at reds. But um, but the the Coppola family wines are very nice. 
Very nice. They have a nice vineyard. And it really is Francis, Francis Ford's. Francis Ford Coppola. I th- I, it's him and his son, I think. Family of Oscar winners. I don't know. Winner. Family of Oscar the winners. The family. The Coppolas. Um, the only other uh, three generation Oscar winners besides no. the Houstons. I would like to party with them on a beach. You know <laughs> why? Because I want to be in the Coppola cabana. Go- <laughs> 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 and Nicolas Cage is really Nicolas... Coppola, but he didn't want um, to be accused of nepotism, so oh, interesting. he got rid of the Coppola. He's a cousin. Huh. No. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Wow, the more you know. That explains that shitty acting career. And so are we going to talk about, I think we need to talk about the Schooners, because there's a funny, um, right, isn't that their name? The Sooners. Sooners, whatever. I actually had just pulled I, up a little story. Whatever, a dark time. So, first up. I live under I, a rock. I, I know spent, nothing about this. I spent a lot of time. Oh, you. I spent a lot oh, of time no, today. Oh, no, I didn't know about this. I spent okay. a lot of time Googling Psi Alpha Beta, Psi Alpha Kappa, Psi Alpha. Sure. Hang on. I, I spent a lot of time today Googling, and I went to their website, and I looked at their- Sigma Alpha Epsilon. That one. Same, same song. Same song. We haven't heard that clip in a while. Work on that. So, say it again. What? <laughs> no, no, no. Say, say the name Let again. Let me do this first. Same song. Same okay, we got that now. I, I, I can only do one screen at a time. It Sigma is, Alpha Epsilon. Thank you. Sigma Alpha Epsilon. Um, now, their whole thing is a being a gentleman. Child. A falsetto child? <laughs> <laughs> They're all about um, being a gentleman. Once. And they have this whole thing where because they, they are the deadliest fraternity <clears throat> in America right now because they've had 10 deaths over the last uh, decade from drinking and pledging and just their hazing causes deaths. So they recently started, because of all the backlash, this new no pledges. And if you really have to go, I spent I spent a good uh, probably an hour and a half this morning on their website trying to pledge for them. Um, so I went through all their recruitment videos and mm-hmm. they show you like all the other bad fraternities are all about working out and people that focus too much about looks and people that work do like Dungeons and Dragons, what's that called? Role playing mm-hmm. games and nerds and how they're different. And the one guy goes, "So what do you think about your pledges?" He's like, "That's a that's a derogatory term. We don't use it anymore." I'm like, "You guys fucking inv- you killed your pledges. You fuckers just changed your mind on this. You Mormon motherfuckers just changed your mind on this this year." And they're acting like we've never used the word pledges. It's just hysterical. You just have to watch the and it's video after video after video of like what you do when you encounter these people in the wild in the as wild. you want to pledge. So much fun. It's, it, it was Scheidenfreude at, at the highest level today watching these videos. And it and so their thing is about being a Southern gentleman. Mm-hmm. Now, but one of the things that they have in their dog whistle racism of this truly awful group of people mm-hmm. is that they're founded in the Deep South. And it says Deep South pre-Revolutionary War. In 1856 in Tuscalo- Tuscaloosa, Alabama. <laughs> Alabama. Be- before and the Civil War. 270 of their original members fought for the Confederacy. Seven of their original members fought for the Union. Not that that matters. We're 150 years ago. I don't have any ago. of that, but yeah. People made some bad choices. They were starting We're not, not going to blame them for them. But they didn't allow anyone of any color or alternate religion until very very recently this is a new thing they were like the mormon church where god changed his mind about black people in 1970s i believe you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. just crazy shit but they're so good about keeping this image up that they change all their videos immediately and act like it never had like the past didn't happen Mm -hmm. But you just cannot say the words we were founded in the deep south in the 1850s so many times before someone's like Oh, you, you mean you don't like black people? Mm-hmm. There's only so many times you can say Deep South 1850 before someone gets the message. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, right. Oh, you're a bottom. I Okay, I got it. Hmm. I like to sit on things. <laughs> I enjoy squats. <laughs> Gosh. I'm a falsetto <laughs> child. I mean, there's only so many subtle hints you can get for you're like, oh, you take it up the ass. I'm with you. It's just so, it's so crazy. But so now they have this video and... Now they're trying to make it sound like. And remember the the rape case. There was a, a rape case in a in a uh, a New Jersey high school a couple of weeks ago where the parents were all upset because they canceled the football season. Mm-hmm. There was this yeah. whole rape thing, and they can't. And then and the parents were on the football field, standing hand hand in hand, crying that their sons' lives were ruined. Well, yeah, you rape somebody, your you, your lives ruined. Somebody mm-hmm. else's life is ruined too. Well, you're waiting for this backlash to start. 
for the parents to come on being like, you can't kill our kids' college careers. No one, no, no one's going on TV claiming this when you can clearly see the kid's face. Mm-hmm. Like, if you go to that school, they're not blurring his face. Hmm. And, they, and he seemed to be pretty proud of it in the video. Right. And so they had, <laughs> CNN had this, uh, one of the uh, black member, for, he, I think it was 2001 to 2005 was his year as a, what's our same song? What's her name? Sigma. Oh, Sigma Al- Alpha Epsilon. Epsilon. And I mean, he was like, he, he, they kept, he keeps being interviewed. And he, I can't think of what his name is. I can't, his name escapes me. The kid that keeps apologizing? No, no. Oh, he's okay. being interviewed as a as a black member of Sigma Alpha Shame Shang. Epsilon. Howard Epsilon. Dixon, the the chef that worked in the house? No, no, no. This oh, okay. is this is this is an actual black member, a standing oh, member, okay. gotcha, a, gotcha, he's gotcha. a recruiter now. All right. And he's they keep putting him on TV and he's like just like these these uh uh like they didn't learn that song that day. No, oh, yeah. This he's is like, they didn't they Well, didn't, sure. They didn't learn that song that day. He's like they they know this song, and he's and he has to stand up there as a member of like, and it's it's lynching. I mean the it mm. the level of it is so huge, and you're just watching this poor guy, and he, he has no one to defend. Yeah, like now he has to defend like, okay, you're a brother. What the fuck were you doing pledging somebody whose thing said the Deep South four hundred times in eighteen fifty? It's just crazy. Mm. So then they had a GoFundMe for the mother of the house. No, not for the mother, for the chef. No, the black chef. No, no, it's a woman. She's the house mother. And they had a GoFundMe campaign for her, and her name escapes me. She was on TV, and you could you could tell like like this southern lady had not seen lipstick or a pig in a long time. She put on foundation and blush, and she went on TV yesterday, all day yesterday. I think it was I think it was yesterday. All day. I can't believe my boys would ever do this. I'm just shocked. Because she's out of a job. Her job was the house mother. Mm -hmm. They found a Vine video. Of her saying, I heard that today. Over, and and she says it. And whether she's, there's a chance that she's trying to sing along with a rap song. But just the glee she finds in saying the N-word like 18 times Mm -hmm. in a row. And what she really looks like, not the painted up. Like, mm-hmm. we brought her to town, so we're going to try some makeup on the, <laughs> put some lipstick on this thing. Oh, my God. And so she, like, the GoFundMe page is down. Like, every time they try to, like, rise above this, you're just like, your thing, your webpage has Deep South in the 1850s. Like, your message yeah. is pretty much so whiteies only. My confusion is I didn't realize there was a GoFundMe for her because there is still a GoFundMe. Uh, actually, Indy, Ago- Indy Agogo, I think it's what it's called, uh, for Howard. Uh, Howard Dixon, who was the chef for over 15 years at that house. So now that they've closed the house out, he's out of a job. He's also uh, a little upset and, and you know about the whole issue, right. obviously. But they've raised, uh, their goal is 50000 and as of this morning, they were at 36000 for him because, obviously, he's out of a job. And yeah. he's got, you know. Right, and they tried to do a GoFundMe for, for her. the house mother, and then the Vine video came out. And the worst part is, is... And as we do it here on, uh, as we do it here. And if, if you if you edited this show wrong with the way oh. we've made a joke about dark times. Oh, sure. I mean, you can edit anything. But I'm sorry, what you're not going to find is me with a Vine video saying the N-word 18 times mm-hmm. or threatening. You know what I mean? Like, there's a difference between a little bit of, like, sarcastic humor and, like, whatever this shit is. Mm-hmm. But this poor guy that they keep interviewing, and he was a recruiter for SAE until... Very, very recently, and, and like one of the, and one of the the white people down there in in uh, Oklahoma that was just all offended. She's like, they have graffitied the building, they what? broke tear it down on the wall, and the re- interviewer goes, yeah, they kind of have to, and she's like, oh, yeah. like it was one of the shortest interviews, and you could tell she was <laughs> gonna be like. You are griff like they like they, they they had wrote graffiti on the Coliseum. I'm right. going back to your story. She was all ready to be offended, and I can't remember. It wasn't Chris Cuomo, but we'll give him credit. It was like, yeah, they kind of need to bulldoze that building, and she was like, no, yeah. yeah. And it was the <laughs> quickest interview, and you could tell she had she had put on her eyelashes for a whole long thing. And question number two was, oh fuck yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that one, <clears throat> but it's so much fun. So I mean that that tells you how like the kind of free time I have. Is that yes, I, I I really tried to uh to, tried to pledge to pledge S A E today? Wow, because I wanted to be a gentleman. Well, sure. But like just you do. the crazy shit, and just googling it's funny. Even if you don't want to go as far as to watch the videos, mm-hmm. just Google their stuff about being a gentleman. And now they have this thing about um drinking. They have uh oh, it's the Shield of Minerva. 
Somebody Google that because I'm 99.9% .9 correct that the Shield of Minerva is their health code. Because you join the fraternity and you get health insurance, you get um, you get your standards of conduct, but then you get like all the things you have to do to live up to their standards to be covered by their insurance. And they had to be, because they killed so many pledges, that they're insured by Lords of London. Oh, Lloyds, Lloyds of, Lond of London. Lloyds of London. Lloyds of London. They had to go internationally to find coverage because they kill so many pledges. So now the rules are all about you can't buy liquor for this, like you can't do a fundraiser, you can't play beer pong, you can't do this, and it's all and it's all under the shield of Minerva. It's Minerva's shield, the rules for health and safety in Sigma Alpha Epsilon. The, oh my God, I had so much fun on the internet today with. Gosh, with I guess you did. S A E, because I'm like, I want to pledge these fuckers. Like, if they're this bad to minorities, let's see how they feel about you know. Again, so right. you may, through wisdom, learn to subdue the baser passions and instincts of your natures. Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm it's, already offended. Like that's. It, but, but read it. It's like page book. one of how many? Like, did it tell you when you... Hang on. No, I didn't download it. I'm just viewing it through things. Oh, because when mm -hmm. I viewed it, it's like 365 pages on how to not get the clap from the gay the guy that's pledging and you're here. making him suck your dick. <laughs> Health and safety policies, alcohol in the fraternity, drugs controlled substances and firearms and hazing. They all get one chapter. Uh, designated driver program, sexual conduct... <laughs> Conduct and violence. Because you, you know their, ra their rape insurance must just be huge. Health and safety fine structure. Oh, yeah. And they tell you, like, you can do whatever you want to. It's all about personal choice. But if you get the clap, we're dropping you from our insurance. 60 pages or so. Oh, okay. I, I thought it was like 100. No, funny, funny, funny so. stuff. Yeah, that's kind of a lot. Your membership agreement. We expect you and all of our members to comply with our health and safety policies. And they pay a lot of money. They pay a lot of money to join. Like mm -hmm. it's inclusive because of the cost of um, pledging. Mm. But and, it, and the other thing I was I was I thought I'd take a we really can't stretch this out to three hours and I can talk. Um, the other mm -hmm. thing um, that came to me was the Joe Paterno that cult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like as I was watching this poor um, black man having to like go on the news and just try to explain how he why he joined this clearly racist fraternity and it's, he's like they, they didn't learn this song today no. and i mean he was almost in tears and i'm like this just reminded me of of matt marotzka with the the penn state story right. of like there's something about college and i was busy just getting high and going to bars and sleeping with guys that i just i guess i missed out on what they were doing on the campus because i was like well you we don't have a sure there's no gay bar in here i'm leaving huh? i missed the whole cult of college well, and, and I've said because, it before, and I, I even had a reason I was, I was slow at the bar, so we were talking politics, but I, I've said it before, like, the most terrifying terrorist in the world to me is the straight, white, young man mob mentality. Yeah. Like, give me give me three frat boys, and that's the scariest fucking thing you can, you oh, can possibly I've, imagine I've to me. I've always said that. Like, if you're walking through a neighborhood and you're going to walk me by people, mm -hmm. you get the three, like... Yeah. redneck 20 yeah. year old nah -uh. that's that's the neighborhood I'm not walking through because mm -hmm. those are the three that seriously have damaged issues yep and are gonna do some serious fucked up shit because they have white privilege yeah. no sense of insecurity yeah and no sense of um uh consequences for their action and mm -hmm. when and I saw it when you saw that rape case from New Jersey where the mm -hmm. parents were like you're killing our our kids college like football careers uh, they ruined that they girl's rape, life. They yeah. raped somebody. Like, what part of like, yeah, what part of that scale did you just think you won? Like, who, who, whose sympathy would? Who did you think was on the other side of the TV that was going to sympathize with the rapist? Like, right? Just help me out here. <clears throat> crazy, crazy, crazy shit. But it's it it. Oh, it's just so much fun. Mm. Um, I think we killed that horse. But you got to watch. Ju you just got to watch this old lady first. You got to see her interview face where she clearly. Had a makeup consultant. Seriously, just turn over to your TV that and turn on CNN right now because the there's been like three stories in a loop. There's been this one, <laughs> there's been the Hillary one, and there was... But the only way I found the the, the house mother was online. I did not see oh, her. Oh, no, she was on, oh, she she was on CNN, yeah. Early this morning, she was not on CNN. She was she she was only on the internet. As of about but, 4 o'clock okay. this afternoon, she was... Okay, yesterday, the makeup one, and all I kept thinking of, um, oh, the good girl with uh, Jennifer Aniston and Zooey... De Chanel, okay. Where uh, Zoe's works for the makeup counter at like the the Walgreens, and she's like, it's called Cirque du Face. Mm. It's a circus for your face, and she's like the really uninterested girl that paints the women with these crazy makeup jobs and to, gives them all these like weird French <laughs> names for what she's done to them. 
And it looks like someone did Cirque du Face on the house mother's face. Because then you see her the next day like she really looks, which was, you know, <laughs> on a... A handsome older woman that doesn't doesn't wear a lot of makeup, mm-hmm. just spewing horrors. No. A bukake party from a clown <laughs> yeah, college. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's called Cirque du Face. Uh, it's a circus for your face. <laughs> you haven't seen Good Girl either. That movie is hysterical. They referred to her today on the radio as, as a Mrs. Garrett type. It's what they referred yeah, to her Right, as. right, right, right. And it looks like Mrs. Garrett got Cirque du Faced. She got the Seminator. What's it called? I was almost I home, Mrs. Garrett. The Seminator? I the True almost, Gentleman. Oh. The True Gentleman. That's from, a, yeah. their, from their code of conduct. Handbook. Ah, oh. the true gentleman. As long as you're not black. What? Right. Um. What? I can't remember. I don't even know what the hell we we're talking about. Mrs. Garrett. Back yeah. to life. Uh, Tidian. Oh, the fact that you did. There was something in there that you were like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out later. Don't know. <sighs> we might not. Or not. We'll see. Let's oh, the uh, semenette. You were like, I don't know what it is. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. I was. I just said semenette to you, and you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like. Wow, short-term what? memory loss, Any? I don't read my articles. <laughs> or don't retain them, either one. Ah. Uh, okay. Like, it was your fucking, you can't shit on your own story, that's cheating. I no longer know what we're talking about right now. I do, we're going to talk about the next segment, it goes like this. <laughs> and now, Thoughtful Vulcan, <coughs> where we in the studio try to make ourselves slightly never less shallow. <coughs> Which is not hard to do. <coughs> we will ask one question of the panel while fucked up drunk. Oh, I'll hurry, I'll hurry. I'll because you know at home how well it goes when important questions come up several hours after alcohol has been served. Politics? Religion? Why not? What could possibly go wrong? Who could you offend? Good luck. Oh, did it end? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I know this song. <laughs> Welcome, hi. Every t- it's forty six seconds every time. <clears throat> so we'll just start with the semenette. <laughs> All right. Jeez. Oops, I'm gonna take this off of there. No, I did not buy one, and no, I do not so intend to. If you decided that you wanted your a child of my very own, mm. like what? How f- how far would you go? Like what what lengths would you be willing to go to? Well, <laughs> God, would you spill the Jesus eggs I, all over? Apparently, I spilled the Reese's eggs every fucking place. You know how I know I'd like Jesus? Because he's always re- represented by pastels. It's behind you. Clearly, I would scour the countryside far and wide for the eggs of Jesus. The eggs of Jesus. Oh, my gosh. I'd put them in me if they had peanut butter in them. <laughs> how would you, get them? How would you, how would you get them in you're there? You're stuffing, stuffing them in your face right now. You're fine. Is there, yeah, is there an orifice? Yeah, is there an orifice? I'll see Manette its way in there. I don't care. <laughs> I think... God. It's hard to imagine because I'm not dedicated to the cause and I can't have empathy for the person who desperately wants that. Um, but I would imagine <laughs> for something that I... Well, then, I, because I think we're all going to be on that same page. Like, like eh, how far maybe. do you think is... Too far? Too far. Like... Because we all... We, I mean, we've all, we all know those people, like... Well... And, now, and, and I think the children on the... But well, we'll get to my part later. But, like, at what point are you, like, just fucking adopt a baby? We you know had what? somebody sitting in that very really? chair right. that we've all watched go through mm-hmm. that. And it's, and it's but they have, But nothing extreme. Like, she was just going through artificial insemination with, you know, sure. one donor and... Yeah, just trying. Um, yeah, I think... I think adoption should maybe be talked about a little bit earlier, you know what I mean, when when people are having <clears> trouble <throat> having children and maybe I don't know. I know there I know there's a whole lot of kids out there that could use a whole lot of homes and Yeah. And uh, That is true. So that okay, so I mean there's 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 an obvious follow up question, but I'll let I'll let whatever his name is over there. How far would I go? If, no, I know what do you, but, but I mean we all kind of know our answer is that none of us are looking to like We're all like eh. No. Well, I'll walk to the end of that table, and then I... I turn the lights wait, off. If, I, if I'm not pregnant by the door, I'm done. <laughs> I mean, you're looking at a person who's but already... I, like, I mean, don't tell my at husband. At what point would you, would you counsel a friend, like, enough? Mm. 
Well, I think part of it would be. Does that make more sense? Are they doing? Mm-hmm. Are they doing harm? You know, is the is the procedures that they're going through, mm-hmm. or are is it? literally physically hurting themselves right and because some of these procedures are i mean the physically, inseminator sounds delightful with a little surprise at the end the, right the <laughs> with the warm shot of something, little something. yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> can um, we control the speed of the ejaculate that's no I, I, that's have, I have a whole new answer okay oh um there's only three of us we can go around a couple times uh, but i would say if they're causing harm to themselves and then obviously there becomes i think it most with anything well, not with anything, but a lot of people <clears throat> get so driven and focused on it that they they become like obsessed with it. It's just mentally they just it, they they lose sight of everything else that's real that's real in the world. And they I, stop taking care of themselves or their house or their job or other family members if they're responsible because they just get so driven and focused on one thing and they lose sight of what the the life and the reality is. So I would intervene if they were going fucking crazy. Um. Or we're just in my way. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> or, or had my parking spot. <laughs> um, and I think, like, I I don't, like, as you hear stories, like, like and with, with uh, Katie's story of, hers was just always the, the constant ins- insemination and trying and trying. No. Um, let me just ask Jenny. I was just going to ask Jenny if she would have one for <laughs> someone for someone else because Jenny said as a bisexual she could have she could have a baby so I was just wondering like would you do it um be a surrogate be a sur- be a surrogate for someone hmm. <coughs> um and and Marnie finally chimes in through a text message that she would change she would say if health is at risk change course no I say stop <sighs> when it doesn't make you happy anymore like when you're starting to like kind of like you're saying but maybe even a step before that like if it's not fun stop fucking doing that you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you're so stressed out about having a kid that it's no longer fun. <coughs> but is there is there so much um is there so much emphasis on the importance of reproducing in in a couple? And I think this is new for the for the gay community because when I, you know, opened up this door and walked through it, I was under the impression that marriage was off the table, kids were off the table. Right. And I thought and now, Well, this is the promised land. Right. You know what's funny? I tell people that I'm old-fashioned gay married, like back before we couldn't, and we just lived together and made it a family. Yeah. Because I wear a ring, and people are like, oh my god, are you married? And I'm like, I'm old-fashioned gay married. Like, we moved in together four years ago. Yeah. Oh. For, for lawyers. But it, what is it, one more year, and you're in the same boat as everybody else anyways? At some point, it becomes a common law. and Not in this state. This isn't a common law state. <coughs> that actually and, never happens. Yeah. So I mean, And is, is the other conversation about... Um, do we need to start to have like, like, uh, <clears throat> I can't think of who it was that said it, but even recently someone was describing Nicole Kidman and was okay. like, she has two kids and two adopted kids. Mm. And differentiating. And differentiating. Like there's a difference between her children. Like, is that, is that a conversation that we need to start having with people almost immediately as far as like gays are concerned, because now we're entering into this arena where we're it's we're kind of new. Many of us are new to the playing field. Some people mm-hmm. came from old relationships where they already had children. Some people knew they wanted children going in and had made plans for. Mm-hmm. But is it is it a way to say that your adopted children are your children too? Like because whenever I hear that, when someone's like, "Well, they have three children, one's adopted," I'm like, "What's it matter? No, what does it matter? They, right? have, they have three children, mm-hmm. and like and Barbara Walters." Uh, has her child is adopted and she always mm-hmm. did, talks about like her story of like if you ever use that word about my if only I can use that word about my daughter like if you ever call her my adopted daughter right I'll put a spear through your fucking neck that's sure. my daughter mm-hmm. <clears throat> so is that a conversation that that needs to Barbara start needs to calm down a little bit no, actually, no, not at all. Because no, if she's putting no. spears through next, no, I, I may, have, I may <laughs> have added it. the spear. Through oh, I want to see that bitch throw it. that javelin. Yeah. I, I mean, do too. She's she's eighty and got a lot of gumption. <laughs> but is that a conversation that we need to start having in the community about an adopted child is still your child? Like, of course they are. <clears throat> because and there's and there's gays that are doing being denied fostership. They're doing fostering. Like, is this a conversation we need to have with people? Like, it's still your kid. Does that make does that make sense before we go through these like people are wasting like tens of thousands of dollars 
to make a baby in a test tube when there's one sitting across the street that maybe needs a home? Like, Well, I feel like being three people that have no children, <coughs> but their very own. Um, but you're, I mean, you're yeah, raising experts two. on this topic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I give relationship versus... What? Nothing. <laughs> Advice. Dark time. <laughs> dark time. I give relationship dark time. Dark time is my new like synonym for anything you need it to be. Dark time. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> no, having not given birth to any children. Um, well, and even like you can say I have kids and I do. And you know what I mean? I, I know that we're a family and we've we've made this home. Um, but in my situation, they're very much not my kids as well. <laughs> Right, and because of a because of a right. a divorce and parenting issues. Right. Yeah, we have our own special shit show. So I do sometimes. <laughs> let me tell you, it's special. I do sometimes um, differentiate. <clears throat> I do sometimes make sure to make the distinction that no, they're not my children. Oh, right, 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 right. You and know? and that would be the difference between adopting. Like if he gave up his rights and you right. formally adopted, then they them. would be mine, a hundred percent. Yes, <clears throat> because now you're For in sure. a you're in a step situation. Right. And I think with step, sometimes that that may need a bit more of differentiation because that there line is a, a lot because there is another parent involved that maybe you're excluding if you don't say right. But um, having said that, but also with the caveat that I have not had any children, I think maybe. Like that bond can be the same without the biology. You know what I mean? Like oh, maybe course, maybe yeah. we're we're over romanticizing the you know, the fruit of my loins. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Like, does yeah. is this something that needs to be addressed within the community as people are entering this that like you don't need to go hire a surrogate. You could start right. and you need start, to make sure start the adoption process <laughs> and you will love that child just as much as any other child you could have. And there probably is and a difference. And they will be perfect between, and yeah. wonderful no matter who they are. And there may be a difference between adopting a newborn and adopting an older child, which is much harder to do. Mm-hmm. And it's it be and it's kind of like uh, adopting the black dog from the um where the, the the dark dogs from the kennels don't get right. adopted as often because they don't photograph as well. Mm-hmm. Is it the same as like adopting a child at seven? <coughs> Do you still sure. feel like because they've had seven years of prior experience, like right. I don't know. I I, I, th- I think the well, I, and and kids don't get to be seven and and in a position to be adopted without a lot of family trauma. Right, right. You so, know what I mean? Like either either everybody's dead, which is its own trauma, or they've lived in the system their whole life. So yes, an older child is always <laughs> uh, going to be more challenging. You're not gonna you're not gonna get yeah. You know. Johnny White Boy is as your seven year old that you're adopting, right? I mean, it's it's just it's just a it's an odd conversation. And I remember a couple of birthdays ago, coming to the conclusion that I was no longer able to offer. And I'm, I'm, I think we we maybe we talked about this. Like there was an age where I was like, I can no longer be part of the raising of a child relationship. Oh sure, okay. Like I can't date someone younger that has some child dream because. <clears throat> Now I think I'm too old. To yeah, this be. didn't happen. Mm. Yeah, I don't, right. I don't want to be part of that that <laughs> equation either. No, I'm not. I don't, I'm having trouble and raising so, myself. And sometimes it's not an age. Sometimes it's just like I don't want kids. And now, <clears> like, <throat> it wasn't part of our old right. lifestyle. It didn't but used now to be it is. We got to yeah. wrap this up. It's uh, end of our third hour. We thank you for joining us. It's Kat Carlson, Al Perkins, me. I'm Clayton McKee. It's the show on Q Talk America. <laughs> we'll leave you with this. Hey, we will see you next Tuesday. You've been listening to The Show on Q Talk America.